Hey guys, Clyde here. We are going to be talking about every single steel ship in World of Warships that you can currently get. Now, there's a couple of steel ships that have gone away. We won't be able to talk about those, or at least one I can think of. I do have Skata with me here in the studio, and we are going to look at all of these boats. We're going to talk about all of them. If you're watching this live with us on Twitch, um, feel free to throw comments and chat in there. If you highlight your message, that'll make it a little bit easier for us. We have a great crowd today. Um, but if you don't want a highlight message, if you don't have enough channel points, that's fine. We'll try to get those ones too. Um, but we're going to be going through, we're going to share our reflections, our thoughts on each of these ships. We aren't going to tell you this ship is the best one, this ship is the worst one, but we're going to talk about reasons why this ship is good. This ship might be really great for players who like X, Y, or Z. Um, and we're just going to try to hold a discussion about each one of the ships. And um, this is something we do on the YouTube channel about twice a year, a little bit more often if we feel the need, but twice a year is when you get your coupons back for resources. And that's why we're doing the discussion today. If you guys aren't uh, familiar with those, if you take a look at the screen right now, you can click on the coupons right here, check this out. Ships resource coupon is refreshing in two days. Now I've spent my coupon. If you haven't spent yours, spend it quick. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably too late. Uh, but if you're here on Twitch and you haven't spent that and you have enough resources to take advantage of it, please spend it now. In two days, you'll get a new one. Whether you use this one or not, you will not have two you'll just still have one. So that's one of the reasons why this is such a, uh, a current and valid conversation today. So anyway, like I said, Skata is with me. How's it going, Skata? How are you doing? We were just talking about old school video games, but now we're moving in <laughs> to talk about steel yeah. ships. Uh, I'm pretty good. Um, I always like it when we do this. This is the, the coupons are back, so it's time to talk about this. Um, so yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's always a relevant time when the coupons are around. And you know, this is a question we get all the time. What's the best coal boat? What's the best steel boat? If you guys are looking for coal ships, uh, we do have a video about that on uh, on YouTube already. We've never done one about research bureau ships, I don't think, but maybe that's a good idea we should do too. Yeah, for sure. We probably should have done that like at the last reset, but um yeah, that's something yeah. we could do. Uh, they haven't i don't feel like they've added, have added any research anyway we don't want to talk about research boats but yeah we should no do no, no we'll do that sometime in the future so stick around guys and and like i said if you're if you're here on twitch thanks for being with us live if you're watching this later on youtube thanks for the follow or for the for the view uh, and hopefully you'll consider giving us a youtube subscription okay so we're in here we're in the armory we're just looking at all the ships i logged in this is a browser i didn't i'm not doing this in the game if you're unaware this is something you can do in the browser if you're on na this is the link if you're on EU, this is the link. And you can just go into your armory without logging into the game client. This is something Scotta showed me a long time ago, and I found it to be a super useful tool. Um, you guys can use those links to do that. I don't have the ones for Asia or the CIS server, so if you're visiting us from one of those servers, I imagine you can you can crack the code by looking at what those two URLs are and figure it out for your own local server. So we're just gonna go in here. We're gonna filter the ships by steel. Uh, because I am logged in on my account, there are a total of nine ships here, three of which I own. So they're going to be down there at the bottom of the list. And then uh, the other six here I don't own, but we're going to be able to talk about all of these boats. I think between Skata and I, we own most of them. And then I think we know a little bit about the others. And if guys in chat, uh, guys and gals in chat would like to comment, you know, like I said, we'll try to get to your stuff. Frost Knight says Mecklenburger bust. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, Scott, uh, I'm going to throw it to you, man. Why don't, why don't you pick one of the ships? Maybe we, we won't go in like a standard order. We'll just have you pick one and uh, we'll kind of bounce around. I'm pulling up my armory because I don't, I have to remember which ones I have. That sounds so stupid, but, um, well, yeah, I have, you, you I have, I have obtained three steel ships. Um, let's which see, three did all, you, do you have? I'm curious. I have about. in order when I was, my first steel ship was Borgonia. Mm -hmm. uh, my second steel ship was Franklin Roosevelt uh, uh -huh. because because uh, I'm kind of a jerk and I thought they might take it out of the game before they nerfed it just because it was so gross when it first came out. It was super and then, powerful. Yeah. The, the last steel ship I bought was Shikishima. <clears throat> OK, OK. So we have totally different sets of ships that we own. Yes. I have Stalingrad. Yeah. Mm -hmm which was my first steel ship. It was the first steel ship. And then I had Ragnar and then, well, actually, I think it was Stalingrad Plymouth and then I got Ragnar mm -hmm. was the order in which I got mine. And I, I got Plymouth without a coupon. Do you remember that? It was a Saturday yeah. and I was feeling spicy and I spent an extra like 8,000 steel for no reason. <laughs> yeah, my 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 non coup if my next steel ship purchase when the coupon resets is going to be Stalingrad. Mm. But right now I'm at twenty seven thousand nine hundred and one steel, and Stalingrad's twenty eight thousand. Um, yeah, yeah. And so like, 
I don't want to not buy. It. I'll just buy it with a coupon because I don't want. I don't care if I use the coupon on coal boats, but um, right, right. I'm so close. I'm in that in a similar boat. And the other day, I was. I almost just bought Plymouth. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. So yeah, Stalingrad's twenty eight thousand. I see. Yeah. I see. And, and Plymouth is twenty seven. Gotcha. So I, I, if I'm going to start, I, you know, start talking about them, I actually, I would suggest we start talking about them in order of cost. Um, <clears throat> okay, that sounds like a good I think, idea. I think honorable mention goes out to steel ships that aren't available for steel anymore. Um, mm. uh, you know, Flint used to be a steel ship, and it was pulled, uh, made a steel legend. You can get it for coal now. Uh, New Strashimi was a steel ship. It was pulled and made a steel legend black was a steel ship that was pulled and it's actually coming back very soon in a crazy format that i don't want to get into in this video no we'll um, cover that another time yeah but I'm, and I'm uh showing and then these. summers i think oh, summers yeah. is the other one right um, yeah neither that's... you nor i have summers unfortunately but summers was pulled as well yeah uh, i'm so on ship. I'm showing the the ships here. So this is New Strashimi. We call it a steel legend. So Scott used that term and it's listed here. You can see it up above on the screen. We call it a steel legend because like Scott has said, this used to be a steel ship and they moved it to the coal store. If you're a newer player and you don't remember New Strashimi being a coal ship or a, a steel ship, you might wonder why it costs so much money for just a tier nine ship or so many so much coal. It's 296,000 coal for a tier nine ship. And when we look at other tier nines, they're 228. Uh, the reason it's so expensive is because it used to be a steel ship uh, and now is uh, is available for coal. So they, they've hiked up the price to be like, it's a fancy boy. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of the reason for that. And the, the Flint Sweet. is the same way. So I've got the pictures of the Flint here. I think it's 168K or something. Whereas a regular steel ship is about, yeah, here it is, 168K. Regular steel ship is between 50 and 100K. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and, and, I, and I was just going to say, I think design language wise, if you look at what's available for steel now, it's all tins. And I think those ships. Yeah, I think um, that's I knew we, we knew people that had Flint and had <clears throat> bought it for steel. Um, we knew people. I don't know. Maybe we didn't know anybody that had Neustra. But um, the, the, somebody somewhere along the lines, they said, you know what? Nobody's buying these. Nobody's buying them because they're not tins. Steel's hard to get. They're just not buying these. So um, yep. they pulled them. And now it's, it seems that steel ships are only tier 10 now, which is fine. Um, yeah, but the, yeah. those were a thing before summers was a 10 that got pulled. I'm not sure why summers got pulled. Cause I don't feel like you saw a lot of summers in competitive until after it didn't, it wasn't available <laughs> anymore. There was that um, rarity that made it yeah. some sort of sh pop up again there for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I will say I do have a previous version of this discussion that's on YouTube where we talk about the steel economy. You talked a little bit about how steel's hard to get, so people buy tens with it. I think that's totally true. Um, and in that video, we talk about the steel economy. You don't get the steel, you, the steel. You don't get steel just for playing World of Warships. You get credits. You get experience points. You get free XP. You get captain XP. You get coal. You get all those currency currencies for just showing up. Can right. I correct you on that? Yeah, go ahead. So you do. You get you can earn 40 steel a day just by playing your daily. Oh, mission. that's true. Daily missions. Which is a just a pittance, but that became a thing in dailies a couple years ago. They added steel to that. That is true. And in that video where I, uh, where I talk about the steel economy, I take that that 40 steel a day and I calculate it out and I think with your clan bonus if you have the maximum steel clan bonus and you earn 40 steel a day you can get shikashima in i think almost exactly three years yeah it's something is the way the math works out. <laughs> it sucks so but that's true you're right you can get steel just for showing up and doing your dailies but it's it's only enough steel to make you go what is steel and then learn that you have to play competitive it's, modes it's like enough it. steel to like let you see your steel ships in the shop or something it's just like yeah exactly you know, it's, it's a taste weird thing. it's, it's a like, taste. oh here's you've got 140 of that now do you want to buy a thirty thousand dollar battleship or thirty thousand steel battleship? <laughs> kind of right thing. right so the, and where I where I was going with that, and Scott, I did point out something critical, which is they give you enough steel to get you hooked. Uh, but like, you don't get steel unless you go play competitive modes and win. You don't get steel for just showing up and trying clan battles. You get steels for winning clan battles, and you get steel for winning in in uh, ranked as well. And there are other ways. Occasionally, there's missions and things you can get it in the dockyard, stuff like that, right? But anyway, steel's harder to get, and so that whole comment about getting ten, uh, tier 10 ships with it rather than the nines. I think you're exactly right. That's why those ships moved out of the steel shop, or at least that's going to be my going assumption for now. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I remember reading at the time was that people were just not buying Neustrashimi because it was, you know, it was 
24,000 steel or 22,000 steel or something like that. And then the closest tier 10 was through a few thousand more. And at that point, when you've saved up that much mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what, I might as well get the 10 because at least then birthday month, I get a super container and Christmas, I get a Christmas box, right? You know, and there's yeah. that other second level logic that goes into collecting tens over nines or for whatever reason. So for those optimizers, um, right? Like, what are you yeah. going to get out of a super container, right? You're going to get camos or signals or something, but you might like Frost Knight in chat did get a Julio Cesare. So people yeah. are going to go for that, right? They're going to they're going to hold out for those tens. Oh, you might get more steel. <laughs> and for whatever it's worth, you, you might get more steel. I just I was I pulled a super container last week or a couple weeks ago, and brands like you're going to get steel, and then I pulled steel out of it. So, yeah, I mean it, it can happen, right? Um, and for whatever reason too, I don't know. Maybe you might have mentioned this already, and if so, I missed it. But like the community of World of Warships is all about the end game. We're all about those tier tens, and of course, as time changes, we'll probably be, start to become more about the super ships too. But we're all about those top tier ships, and there are players who just never not play tier ten or tier eleven. Brand says, "My steel." <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm keeping yeah. it safe for you, buddy. I collect or tens because it's kind of like an, especially tech tree tens. It's like accomplishment. Like I finished that line. Yeah. But then I don't like, to be you, you, you can go look me up on wow's numbers, folks. I don't play the tens. Like I, I play yeah. all over the, t the table. Cause I, I, I actually have more fun playing away from 10, but, um, that doesn't mean that when you're going to save up something like steel, especially if you play competitively and that's your way of getting it. Yeah. If you look at clan battles, for example, we're, we're the current clan battle season that we're in right now. Um, you know, at the recording of this video is once again, tens. This is the first clan battle season with tens and super ships, but, but the, the prior two seasons that we've had were also tens. And so usually if there's, you know, multiple, you know, let's say three or four clan battle seasons in a calendar year, uh, at least half of them, if not more, are usually involved tier 10. So, uh, and some of the steel tier tens are some of the best uh, ships in the game for that purpose. Uh, so if you're earning, uh, if you're spending your time playing competitive to earn steel, um, you're going to use it to buy tens because you're going to use it to play competitively, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. Atari says, Atari asks a question that gets asked a lot. He says, will there be any new free XP ships down the way? I feel like those have been leaving the game, not much coming in. And I'll give my take and then I'll have Scott to share, you know, his thoughts too. Um, this is something that the community managers for Wargaming have answered a bunch of times. And usually they say, there's already a bunch you can already buy. Why would we add more? And also, we're really just doing the research bureau now. And that's definitely the trend that we've been seeing. So if you look at the research bureau, research bureau ships are basically ships that cost experience points and credits, just a heck of a lot of it. Um, and I have a whole video about how to optimize this. In fact, you can check it out right here. I'll drop a link in chat for you. Um, that's on my YouTube channel. And I talk about how the economy of all the uh, resources that go into research bureau ships work and why they cost what they cost and i help you develop a cost that you can compare against regular ships and i'm here to tell you research bureau ships are just like free xp ships but just more expensive and wargaming has moved that way uh, uh, instead of doing more free xp ships so i don't think we're ever going to see another free xp ship i think it's just going to be research bureau and whatever crazy scheme they come up with next um, Scott, I don't know if you've got anything to add on the, the free XP versus research bureau versus other ships. That's the, I mean, that's the real story. I mean, it's not like speculation. That's yeah. The they're not the war gaming employees say, say that, but... right? It's it. I mean, I've, they've said, I mean, enough of the community managers and people have said that on stream, right? They're not, they've basically the reality said is, it, yeah. the reality is, is that it's the research bureau and you can burn, you can, it'll cost you three times as much. Think about, think about the auction house that just occurred where they sold the Musashi uh, Musashi, when you, how much free XP did Musashi cost you when you bought it? 750,000 free XP. Yeah. Can you imagine folks getting a tier nine Yamato for 750,000 free XP in this day and age, in this game? Impossible. It's just it, not it, a thing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get that. You wouldn't sniff that anywhere near, right? It, you look at, you know, similar analogs like Shikishima, for example, that's 32,000 steel, right? Um, you know, you're just, you, you can't even free XP to Yamato probably for that. Um, I think, no, it, you know, you I'm pretty can't. sure that I line costs more to free XP to. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, you think in Missouri was similarly, similarly priced for free XP back in the day. Um, just that's a world that doesn't exist in this economy, in this game anymore. Right? So and, I can... and if you, it, it is what it is. It, it's all research bureau all the time. Uh, that's what the free XP is for. 
Yeah, Yamato's uh, tier 1 to tier 10 experience points, if you go the most efficient way possible, is 852,000 experience points, right? So, like, yeah. that's less than, or more, I should say, than what Musashi costs. Now, the technically, Izumo would have been about 600,000 or so, but... Right, and yeah, <laughs> Musashi's a bang-up better Izumo, right? And so you, you think about free, and since I started playing, when I, when I first started playing the game, Alaska was still a free XP ship. Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh man, Alaska's so good. Alaska was a free XP ship. Um Missouri, I think, had already left. Kronstadt was a free XP ship, and it Kronstadt actually uh was like the shortest available premium ship ever. It was even available short a shorter period of time than Smolensk, which a lot of people probably don't yeah. know when they see a Kronstadt. But if you go back over the list, you know, what was the last free XP ship that probably got yoinked? I don't think I know Smallin got yoinked and was free XP, but I think it actually was probably Nelson. Like they kept Nelson around for a really long time, and it was cheap. It was like three hundred seventy-five thousand free XP. Yeah, um, it was, and, it and was. they finally yoinked it out of there as well. And and so nah, I, I, I I'm sorry, folks, if if you're waiting for uh for anything other than Groningen or Azuma, um. <laughs> Which I think are the only free XP ships, but I don't know for sure. Um, I mean, there's uh, the been, one that a long time. I think Aegir is still in there for people who don't have it, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. Aegir some maybe. of those boats that, that we don't think about because we already have them unlocked. I've had them for a long there. time and I can't see in my client that they're sold for free XP. So I just forget. I, exactly. So I think if you log in with a fresh account, uh, you can see that those some of those are still there, which is great that they're still there. I think they'll eventually kind of walk them away. Big GD3 points out Hayate is still available. So... You know, there, there are, are free XP boats out there. But I think, you know, Scott to Scott's point and to my discussion points earlier, like they're just moving towards Research Bureau for that. And the economy has changed in that time to make things like like 750K. I will I, I will tell you when they first announced Missouri it was going to be 750K. I went to work and at work I had like five friends who played World Warships with me and all of us were like 750,000 free XP. How is anyone ever going to get that much? And now we're like, I can grind that in a, in a, you know, in a month, right? Yeah, like totally the economy totally. has changed from what the prices were back in the day. Yep, so it's okay. the reality of it. Now put a nice break there so you can cut that whole segment out of YouTube. I don't know. I might just, I think I'll just leave it in there. I think people like this kind of discussion. I don't know. You guys tell us if it's any good. Let us know in chat. <laughs> If we're uh, if we're talking about dumb stuff or it's useful, um, so I steel think ship. what we'll do is we'll jump into the steel ships. Uh, Scott, I like your idea about talking about the steel ships in price order, and I think Plymouth is older than Ragnar, so let's do price then age. So we'll start with Plymouth, maybe. Sure. So you have Plymouth. Tell me why Plymouth is good. <laughs> yeah, I'll click on Plymouth. So Plymouth. I'll tell you what, dude, you and I sat around that Saturday and I said, I don't know what the heck, I guess I'll buy Plymouth. And I bought it and I played some games and I and then I was kind of like sad for a minute. I said, oh, no, Plymouth is really hard to play and I'm not good at it and I keep getting deleted. And I think Plymouth is not the easiest ship to play. I'd, I'd say that you need a reasonable skill floor to be able to handle the Plymouth. But I've spent some time with the ship. I played it a bunch and I found it to be really enjoyable. Uh, my, my normal party line on Plymouth is that um, Plymouth is the tier 10 version of the tier 7 uh, uh, Belfast and the tier 8 Belfast 43. And I'm waiting for Wargaming to announce a tier 9 British premium that completes that 7, 8, 9, 10 split. Uh, Plymouth is really, really uh, powerful. It's got 16 AP guns that shoot. I think it's like 16 kilometers. We can go look at my ship here. Uh, or maybe maybe we'll just stay here in the browser because that's going to be easier for me. But um, but it's got that. One thing that it also has is it has all of the sensors. It's got acoustics and radar and smoke and a hull repair. Now, it's not a super heel. It's a regular heel, uh, but it's a pretty good one. Um, so, you know, for me, Plymouth is great if you like Edinburgh, if you like Belfast and Belfast 43, um, you know, if you like even Minotaur, uh, it's it's similar enough in playstyle to that. But unlike a radar minnow where you have to give up your smoke, you don't have to do that on Plymouth. Um, I really think Plymouth is powerful in the hands of somebody who's reasonably comfortable with that kind of gameplay. If you don't like light cruiser play, you're going to hate Plymouth, like British cruiser play. Um, but if you do, this could be a really fun ship for you to have. I will say that I don't see it in competitive modes very often. I think when people take it into things like, you know, like a COTS or a clan battles, a lot of times it's a flex. Hey, watch out, Clive. The uh, Yamato's yep. trying to backdoor you a little bit. He's pointing at me right now, but. Yeah. Ooh, ouch. Just got Vermonted. Corpse out. Watch out. You 
Shoot. <laughs> uh, you know. Yes, you sure can. Sure you can. 10,000. <laughs> yeah, you can cheat Perfect. pretty much anything. Uh, it's not because they think it's the most capable ship, but uh, I don't know. I kind of ran on and on there for a minute. Scott, I'll throw it back to you, kind of your reactions to my comments and maybe any new ones that you want to make about Plymouth. I, yeah, I mean, I, we've talked about this a little bit, and I'm intrigued by Plymouth, but it's one of those situations with the economy and how... So, like, I think you and I are kind of in a similar situation with how we accumulate steel. We don't... Neither of us really play a lot of ranked anymore. I used to, but I don't really. Um, yeah. We're obviously... We're in the same clan for clan battles, so our we're, our fortunes for steel gaining and that are tied to that operation. Um, <laughs> Which is, you know, we, you know, middling, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we maybe, need a little steel. You know, but... And I feel like, I feel like just about whenever the steel coupon resets, I, you know, that, mm. we get that coupon twice a year. And I feel like when that coupon resets right now, I usually have enough steel to use it. Um, I think that's, that's how I have three steel ships. I feel Probably like that's been about, about your pace. Yeah. Yeah. And so Plymouth is one that I would really, I, I think it'd be cool to have. I'd like to have Plymouth in my port. I love Belfast. Mm. Um, I'm not very good in it. Uh, I've had great games in it, but then like sometimes it's just it's a light cruiser and and you know, well, Belfast, the original Belfast is one of those ships in your port, like where if people see it, like every it's everybody shoots you because it's like oh look at that thing, it's Belfast. It's not as powerful as it once was, but I still like for Belfast. sure. And I really like Edinburgh, and 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 um, yeah. I, you know I I like the the town class ships, um, you know. So I I think I think um, I think Plymouth would be fun to have. But again, when you look at that, and, and you know, Tari brings up a point in in chat that um, when you look at is it how does it stack up against what else you'd be spending that steel on, right? For me, it would be a total luxury purchase, right? It would be well, I've got <laughs> so much steel, and, and yeah. I, I, it'd be it'd be I have so much steel, and I haven't bought this boat, but I'm not to the point of the of the Unicum dudes who get so much steel that they buy those steel camos for random things. Um, you know, the guys who are like, I'll just go spend my steel on this camo and put it on good and loo for a joke. Like, I'm not that guy uh, right. anywhere far yeah. from it, right? Because right. there's plenty of steel ships and they, yeah. they, you know, there's plenty of steel ships. Around. But I'd like to have Plymouth. Um, it looks fun when you play it. Uh, we've, you know, when we did yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And and I just like the idea of it. But it's, uh, it's just, it's not, it, right now there's six steel ships I don't have. And it's probably... Jeez, it's probably fourth on my list. Fourth on your, I was going to say it's going to be like fourth or fifth on your list, right? Yeah, it's probably fourth on my list. Uh, GMAC asks a question, says, how much steel would a top clan earn steel wise? Um, each oh, league. When they, when they rank out in a season, they like it's we'll, enough to buy a boat, isn't it? We'll talk about that too. So each of the leagues starting in like Squall, you earn like 2000 or 2200 steel ish and there's one two three four five leagues and the top two leagues are a little bit more and then if you rate a certain level your clan might get five or ten thousand steel right so let's assume that you know it's it's about 10 or fifteen thousand steel probably somewhere in that window for one of the one of the better clans people who get up to hurricane and if somebody in chat is a hurricane or a typhoon league uh, streamer or, or not streamer, but maybe a streamer, but player, let us know how much steel do you guys earn in a season? I'd love to know. Thank you. Um, so you were saying, getting back to your comments about Plymouth, you're like, it's probably fourth or fifth in your list. It's probably like fourth. So like for you, you're have, saying it's not high priority for you and your play style. Now, of course, other players might be like not as interested in battleships and there are a lot of steel battleships. And so you may lean towards, I guess there's about the same number as there are cruisers and stuff. One more, I guess. Um, yeah. yeah, but I, yeah. I, I I'd like to play it, and and it does look fun when you do play it. Yeah, I think you'd you'd probably enjoy it, but I can understand your prioritization, and we can talk about that kind of as we go too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's kind of our discussion on Plymouth. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, boy. That's a lot. That is a name. There's a lot of letters. P A Hadron Fiddleback. I'm gonna assume you're a fiddleback that's interested in hadrons from Pennsylvania. 
So Ragnar is going to be our next ship. Uh, that's one that I have, so I'll take the ball on that one and give it a shot here. Uh, Ragnar is a tier 10 pan-European destroyer, heavily focused on guns because it has no torpedoes. Um, Ragnar's got four guns. They're 152 millimeter guns, which is bigger than most destroyers. Most of your pan-Euro destroyers have 120s, I think. And then most of your American destroyers like 127s or Germans, I think are 128s, that kind of a thing. Um, and so I think the guns reload on Ragnar in about 3.2 seconds. I'll double check here um, as we're as we're talking about it. Um, and they're uh, very, very, very powerful. They've got great pen. They're incredibly accurate. Uh, my reload with my captain and my build is about three seconds on Ragnar. Other builds may be slightly above or slightly, slightly worse. Um, but the HE is good on it. The AP is good on it. Um, it does, like I said, no torpedoes, so you're going to be torpless. You do have a radar, which reaches out seven and a half kilometers, and your your detectability is seven and a half kilometers. Those two numbers being the same is actually a wonderful little gift, because if there's any time when you're driving around in your Ragnar and you're spotted, but you can't see what's spotting you, just hit your radar, and they will be illuminated. Um, you never have to do any math to think about. How much of a risk is it to use my radar? Because you know you're going to 100% spot that guy. Um, so Ragnar is really powerful. It's very good and competitive. The top clans use it. I don't think it's for everybody. I wish it handled a little better. I wish it was faster. I wish it turned a little better. Um, but in general, this is a very, very strong ship. I think it's fun in randoms, and I think it's pretty capable in, um, in upper level competitive. So I, I think most folks who like a gunboat destroyer can make the Ragnar work. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and I think it would work out well for those players. Sorry. I thought my audio was crashing again. Um, so that's kind of my, my top level take on Ragnar. Now this isn't a ship that you have in your port, but I know you've fought the Ragnar a bunch of times, Scott. Like what's your take on it uh, on the, on the receiving end of Ragnar fire? Uh, maybe that yeah. might be a good place to start your discussion. I think I, I don't like. I don't like fighting against them in competitive because a lot of times the person driving it, at least in the season when it first came out, um, they were very good and they they were probably really good no matter what boat they were in. But then they sure. were, their skills their skills really came through um, in Ragnar. Ragnar's guns hit like a truck, and the reload on them makes them very effective. Um, just leaving you know besides the fact that it has radar right totally um, yeah so Reg ragnar and and this will come up later when we talk about another steel ship ragnar is a ship that i actually have played but i've played it in a capacity as a super tester where i'm not allowed to provide my impressions on ragnar right um so i can't really talk a whole lot about ragnar unfortunately because it's not in my port uh, but i have played it um which sounds really weird uh but what it I is would an say, interesting yeah, restriction you have but yeah, I it's understand an interesting restriction at. i have but playing against them um, I know that two seasons ago, I felt like yeah. Ragnar was kind of new and we, um, I had gotten small and, and I, and I, I like small a lot more because small has torpedoes. Um, for me, uh, not having torpedoes mm. is kind of a, kind of a non-starter on a DD. Um, but, uh, playing against them, usually the, at the time, the people that had them were very good in them. Now Ragnar has been out a while. And the laws, the law of averages is catching up, right? So now it's not a bunch of uh, of dudes that were sitting around with steel because they had no other ships to buy that got them, and then uh, then were you know browbeating Just people, beating with them. on people now, with now, these powerful boats. Yeah, now plenty of of of, uh, of uh, average players probably also have Ragnar, um, yeah. and so you're not always guaranteed to have to fight a Ragnar that is very um, very skilled. I will say when fighting Ragnar because Ragnar also has a doesn't I feel like it has relatively decent armor. Like it's I, pretty I good. I'll put it think, up over here while you're talking. But yeah, I feel like it's got like kind of thicker plate than I mean, I don't know if it's got Elbing levels of plate, but um, I feel like I feel like there's some play against it where you need to be a little bit more savvy. And, and actually, if you're in a DD and you're fighting against one, you might need you might need, need to switch to AP a little bit more if you catch sides. Yeah, I've got um, the, just so you can punish it and stuff like that. I've got the number for you. So the side plate on Ragnar is 25 millimeters, which is yeah. just bigger yeah. than a lot of DDs can pen with HE. Yeah. A lot of DDs it, are going to get 19, 20, 23 millimeter pen. So you might need to switch to AP when you're shooting at a Ragnar yeah. if you're also in a destroyer. Yeah, uh, you know, God, you know, God help me in randoms. If I run into a Ragnar, hopefully I'm in Regolo or I'm in Elbing or something that can actually shoot through it. And even then, I'm probably going to lose the gunfight because the reload's just not there. Because um, Ragnar is just really strong. And again, the 
the folks who play it tend to be pretty savvy in it and uh, able yeah. to land the shells, even though I think the guns are a little bit floaty. They are a little flo I can say that, you know, as from my experience, they are a little bit floaty. I mean, you know, just looking at the numbers, you can kind of tell they're a little floaty, but then playing it, definitely they are. The, the good news is, is that they're incredibly accurate. The dispersion is very small. The bad news is, is that if you miss, it's your fault. So, you know, for a while there, you could blame it on dispersion, but when you switch to Ragnar, all of a sudden you're the guy or the gal or the player who's not getting those hits and stuff. Um, and I will say, like, I got Ragnar with the last steel coupon. I got it in December, I think is when the last one came out. Um, and so, like, I was part of, like, the second wave that Scott is talking about of more average players who were getting their hands on a Ragnar. I think there were a lot of Borgonias and Ragnars that got sold last time around. Um, and so players like me, you know, pretty average dudes coming along, picking up a Ragnar. It's a lot less intimidating than it used to be, but I still think that you got to be careful because it is a powerful ship and in the hands of a, of a powerful player, um, it can do work to you for sure. Yeah, you're going to see more of them next weekend when the coupon hits. I agreed. Yeah, I think you're going to get wave three or maybe that's wave yeah. four. I don't know. But the next maybe. wave is going to come through um, for sure. Again, though, uh, where we talked about how I said Plymouth would be like fourth on my list of steel ships I don't own. For me, Ragnar is sixth, which is probably anathema to a lot of people, but it just, um, it's not on <laughs> it's my just, list of things. It's just not your style so much, right? And so yeah. the, the interesting thing about that is part of that discussion that we always have when we pull people together for these talks is, you know, Scott, I might say, hey, Ragnar is the last on my list. It doesn't mean Ragnar is a bad boat. It just means it's not for oh, Scott. It means I'm just means I'm a bad player with that kind of boat. Yeah, or or maybe it's just not fun or whatever. You but gotta yeah, know your caps and limbs, folks. <laughs> you gotta capabilities, limitations. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So like, and and that's why when people go, "What's the best steel ship?" We don't talk about that because that's kind of a that's a very impossible question to answer. But that's that is interesting. Like you said, that may be an to some folks where you go Ragnar getting that trash heap last and you don't mean it's a trash heap you just mean it's last you know so. no and it's a you know for me too it has to do if you're with your port right like i i think i have small end and i like small and better and that that yin's my yang on on european radar uh <laughs> destroyers right i don't it, it's just it, it's just not something i need in my port in, as far as ragnar goes yeah yeah um okay i think that's kind of our discussion on ragnar we've had a lot of uh you know chat about um this ship in in uh in the chat most of it i don't think you guys have asked a ton of like questions or things where you want to see uh, a bit of a discussion on it but uh lots of excitement about ragnar so i think you're probably right we're gonna see a lot of people picking up ragnar and uh and running with it here with the new coupon that's coming out the next cheapest ship is stalingrad so it's just the it's the clyde show today i get a <laughs> i'm gonna kick off all of these um stalingrad uh being a twenty-eight thousand steel ship is our next cheapest ship again 25 percent off is the coupon we'll click on this again just to show you so for this guy that'd be seven thousand steel in savings so if you had a coupon you'd pay twenty-one thousand steel for this um which honestly for the stalingrad is is quite a bargain um stalingrad is one it's like the oldest steel ship. It is the oldest steel ship. And I remember when it first came out, everybody, we were all scared of them. There were all these dudes out there that had uh, Stalingrads. And uh, it was pretty quick that I found out that they burn just like anything else. You know, we could burn them down um, and, and, and get them killed. It wasn't too scary necessarily, but it didn't mean that it couldn't just knock your jaw off. So Stalingrad was one of the first cruisers that we saw that had... Uh, guns that size 305 millimeter guns um, it does have a hull repair it's got radar that's 12 kilometers long but not quite as long in duration as a u.s radar it's got a turbo aa or a defensive aa uh, fire module or consumable and of course it's got damage control party just like anybody else uh, the guns on stalingrad are incredible they they fly the shells fly fast uh, they hit hard they punch through things it is a very strong ship for sure um and uh, and of course it's pretty well armored. Uh, later we had Petro Pavlovs come along, and Petro had a few armor improvements over Stalingrad, um, and some of those have been kind of recently nerfed away to where Petro sits a little higher in the water now, which was one of its advantages over Stalingrad, and and a couple other items are going to make Petro a little bit less, a little bit more vulnerable to fire from different kinds of ships. Um, Daddy O Newman says only the Unicom players got Stalingrad at first. Exactly. So they were scary. It's the same problem. I shouldn't say problem. It's the same effect we see every time a new ship comes out. Like Scott says, there's these guys sitting around with 70,000 steel in their accounts and they didn't have any ships to buy because they already had them all. And then a new ship comes out 
those guys are going to get it first and they're going to go out there and, and really, you know, tear, tear the town up um, in those new ships. So Stalingrad's really strong, um, very strong, very capable. Its reload is slow. Um, I can't remember. If, I always say it's like 17 seconds, but I don't think it's actually quite that bad. Um, and it is, let me pull it up here. Its reload is 18.5 uh, seconds. And so it's actually worse than I thought. So it's a long reload. Um, one of the disadvantages of that is that your 25, 30 second radar, when you, fire that radar off, you get one chance to hit them. Maybe two, you get two, I guess. You, if, if your guns are reloaded, you get a shoot. When you see them, as soon as you hit your radar, you get one reload, and then you get a shoot again, and then your radar expires before you get a chance to respond. So you need to combine arms with allies to use those radars to get those conversions to kill DD, player, uh, DD ships. Uh, we don't want to kill players, we want to kill ships. Um, so that's one of those things that is kind of tough with that long reload. And then the other challenge is it has the long fires, the battle cruiser 60 second fires. And so you're going to be using that DCP a lot uh, because these big ships needed a vulnerability. One of them is a vulnerability uh, to fires. Now, Scott, uh, you were saying, I think uh, that you're going to get Stalingrad as your next steel ship. Like what's kind of on your mind? Why are you thinking Stalingrad is your next pick? Uh, and well, uh, tell me a little bit about your thought process there, I guess. Well, for me, it's time. Um, I've, if I look at what else is available right now for steel, it, to me, it feels like the one that's it's the right time to get it for my port. Um, in competitive, I've been shifted back to playing radar cruiser a lot more. Um, I've been playing uh, Moskva this season because we can't play Petro. Stalingrad, I think, will frustrate me in the fact that it has those longer reloads because I always want to be shooting. Yeah, um, but ABS, I just feel like always I just shooting. feel like it. Yeah, I just feel like it's time for my port to add Stalingrad finally, right? And so, um, you know, the, some of the things we <laughs> talked about and some of the changes that have happened to the game in the last few years since I started playing. I remember when I started playing, we'd see Stalingrads, and you guys. I think I think mm -hmm. a few of the guys in Wrecked had Stalingrad. I, I feel yeah, like you had it. Was it was pretty I feel popular. Like Heavy had it. Yep. And and people were like, oh, that thing is really great. It's like a truck. It's got these. I mean, it still has like some of the best guns in the game. It really like the velocity and the the shells are point and clicky, and they really do yeah. beat up stuff. The velocity um, on these shells, and let me just I, this blows my yeah. mind. Three hundred five millimeter shells, nine hundred and fifty meter per yeah. second velocity on a shell that big is unheard of. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah, fast. It, they, they, the shells rip, and it's it's really that you know point and click. Um, you know, I I don't know the sigma on Stalingrad off the top of my head, and I haven't played it, so I can't mm -hmm. speak to how super accurate or inaccurate it might be, but. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's why I'm getting it. Now, downsides, right? You know, changes that have occurred in the last six months or so. Maybe it's more than that because I lose track of time with pace of change in the game. But yeah, uh, they did. I think they nerfed the radar duration a couple times. Twice. And um, I was pissed both times. Yeah. The the captain rework year and a half or however long ago made it so that you can no longer build cruisers for fire prevention. So that that just wrecks a bunch of super cruisers right 60 second fires that you can't yeah. get do anything about other than damacon on stalingrad alaska puerto rico you know any you know even on the on the top the tech tree dutch boys gudenlu like all those ships so that's a real drag <clears throat> we know when we fight stalingrad and clans now um you don't even have it used to be that you had to you know there were certain ships that you fought against it with something like goliath that had big he could really pen the deck well and you got a good you got good fire damage right but but now with the with the duration of the fires i've had great success uh, in clans just using good to do airdrops on stalingrads and you just get them rolling and burning forever because you can't combat the fires. so it's not as masterful in competitive i don't think as it once was yeah, um agreed. if you could play if you could play petro in competitive <laughs> i think i think even though i don't like i hate playing petro because i just find it to be dull <laughs> But I, I I think that it probably is more tanky. Now, they've made those changes to Petro, and Atari made a great comment in our chat about, well, I feel like we're going to see some kind of premium Petro now because they made these changes to Petro. I will bet dollars to donuts that those changes to Petro are oh, so yeah. that a, t a Tier 11 Petro can come out that is what Petro was. And it, it I won't even be surprised in the slightest if that Tier 11 Petro has the rifles off Stalingrad. Um, yeah, that, and, would, that would not surprise me one bit. I've already uh, nicknamed then, it, by the way. 
It's the yeah. retro Pavlovsk. That's what yeah, we're going to call that. Retro Pavlovsk, Stalin. <laughs> it's where they retrofit all the bullshit stuff yeah. onto that boat. From Petrograd, Pavlovsk. whatever you want to call yeah, it. I, I really yeah. think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be that <laughs> hull with crazy, crazy rifles and probably a, a fourth turret or some goofy, silly thing. Oh, it's going to be it's um, going to be a gas. It's going to be. A but gas. Yeah. So back back to those Stalingrad. <laughs> I still think even though Stalingrad's long in the tooth at this point, I, you, I think it randoms. Um, I think you can still get a lot of work done with those guns. Um, you know, I think another weakness that has, I don't think it's super great uh, against carriers. I don't, I don't, you know, against tier 10 AA, I don't think it has a great tier 10 AA either. Unlike Nevsky and Petro that both really do. Yeah. Um, you know, Stalingrad and Moskva don't have that as great. Um, but I uh, still think as far as the, the uh, steel cruisers available, it's still probably the king of the heap. Yeah, it's pretty strong, right? It it's AA rating, which is hard to compare. I know is is the highest of the uh, Stalingrad, Moskva, and Nevsky. But you know, I don't know that it's like super super. Nothing is invulnerable to planes, right? And and uh, Stalingrad and Petro, especially with their relatively stationary play styles, tend to suffer to airplanes. And so Stalingrad's going to suffer from that as well. But it's also going to have the sixty second fires. One thing too that we've we've had conversations with a lot of. Um, a lot of those typhoon and hurricane league players who talk a lot about how they don't see Stalingrad in upper tier competitive play. It makes an appearance in bronze league in clans in you know, squall and in gale. It kind of goes away when we get up to storm. We don't see it anymore. Um, and so like, I think for clans like ours where we play storm and below, it's okay for us to bring a Stalingrad out there, but you know, for some players, it's really not going to be an option because of those fire weaknesses you were talking about um, with yeah. the captain builds. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think the guns on it are, excuse me, uh, are still quite amazing. I think it's a fun ship for people who like that big bad gun. And and I'm a very average player. I will tell you right now, my number one damage game of all time is in the Stalingrad. I did 209,000 damage. I know many of you in chat and on YouTube later are probably thinking, I've got a 300,000 damage game. Good for you. Um, and I, it was because I blapped uh, Yamato from the side with those amazing guns and basically deleted him in one salvo. It was one of the funnest things I've ever done in World of Warships. So I still have fond memories of playing this boat. and. Uh, you know, I don't trot it out very often, but it, it is still very strong. And and so, you know, I don't think Stalingrad's a bad recommendation. I think your thought about how maybe now's the time to pick it up because it is the oldest steel ship is probably not a bad reason to be looking at it. Although I don't know if we're going to see it go away anytime soon. It's, it's hard yeah, to say. Uh, big GD3 asks in chat, you know, as old as it is, do we think it'll be removed in the near oh, future? Oh, I see. You now, know, yeah. I have no no idea so right. hard uh, to tell when they're gonna you know, pull something i don't know if there's any kind of um i don't know if there's any kind of quota for like well we only want to have x number of steel ships available at any time i don't think that's necessarily a thing um no. especially since there's you know newer steel they they're they feel free to nerf them right so if if mm. they can nerf them or they can tweak them now i don't know why they would ever pull them anymore unless they just don't sell and if they thought well, I could we could pull that for steel and we could sell it for a truckload of coal or we could sell it for research, you know, research points or who knows, right? Right. Uh, Girl Scout cookies or French biscuits <laughs> or whatever, right? If they thought there was a way they could monetize an asset that they can't monetize, you know, that's kind of the driving factor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I could see Stalingrad leaving the store because it's because it's so old. But again, you know, there's a lot of old premiums that they haven't pulled if they're not super overpowered. And Stalingrad really went through the phase where it was, I would contend, super overpowered. And I don't really think it is super overpowered anymore no. in, I think in it's 2022. Strong, but I don't think it's super think, overpowered, yeah. yeah. I think it's steel ship strong at this point, but sure. I don't think it's, you know, epically overpowered. So I, I actually don't know that they'll, they'll ever pull it. That said, one of the reasons I want to buy it now is just in case, because, I you know, it, it is yeah. long in the tooth. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Zara Metz here. What's up, man? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think Stalingrad is all of those things is are, I think are factors like you're describing there. And then the other thing I'll say about it, too, is that, uh, you know, we talk about how old Stalingrad is and then we talked about how it's got its radar nerfed. A lot of people think, hey, wait, they don't nerf old radar or old premium ships. We have to remember steel ships are not premium ships. They're special ships. You Nobody paid money for a Stalingrad. 
And so we've got the gold leaves around the white ship symbol. That means these are nerfable. They can adjust all these ships. And they have, right? They've, they've adjusted Franklin D. Roosevelt. They've just recently nerfed Ragnar. Uh, they nerfed the radars on Stalingrad. I'm sure there are other examples that I'm not thinking of. Um, so be a, that's another reason, your comment there, Scott, about how um, because the ship is adjustable, maybe it'll just stay here forever. And Stalingrad's great. Like, it's a good boat to have. So I'm okay with it staying there forever. But for anybody who's concerned it might be leaving and you're thinking that now is a time for you to get that boat and you think you'd like it, I don't think there's a bad time. Uh, now is a bad time to get it. Bereskov says, the only tier 10 steel ship they've removed is Summers and I have no idea why. I know people keep asking them to bring it back. I'd be interested in them bringing it back. I don't think the Summers was particularly OP either. Like you said earlier, it was... You know, we always call it the American Shimakaze, and I think there are a lot of people who would like to have that boat back um, and available, and I think a lot of people would pay for it. Maybe they'll put it in the auction and try to squeeze doubloons out of it is probably what they'll do. That's my guess, anyway. <clears throat> that's a, it's safe safe to presume, right? Yeah, I would <laughs> think so. Um, okay, I think that's probably our discussion on Stalingrad. Uh, so thanks, guys, for you know throwing your comments in chat there. I think that's a worthwhile one to talk about. And uh, There's always a lot of speculation when the coupon comes out. Is it, are they taking it away? Uh, there's no evidence of that yet, but who knows? You know, uh, Wargaming works in mysterious ways. Um, Austin is the next cheapest ship at 29,000 steel. Um, I kind of kicked off those first three. So let me have you kick off Austin. Neither of us have this boat. So neither of us have this boat. So yeah, yeah. I, take it away. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, I, I have Jean on, which is uh, the same hull uh, relatively, um, but uh, you know, completely different play style. The new, mm -hmm. the new pan Asian or relatively new pan Asian tier 10. It shares the same look uh, as Austin, right? It's the same, you know, fake class of ship the U S didn't really build. Yeah. And in this case, sold to Korea or somewhere, Singapore. I don't know who Genon's supposed to be. But anyway, I'm not sure. um, we we do have, uh, I think we have like one or two friends that have Austin. Um, they, they find it sometimes confounding. But, you know, Austin's claim to fame is that when Austin, you know, when Austin came out, uh, the only sap shells in the game, if I remember right, were on Italian cruisers. They, we may have already had Italian battleships with sap. And so this was like, we're putting yeah, out this so. American light cruiser with the SAP, with an option for SAP. So Austin has uh, SAP, uh, 127 millimeter American guns that shoot SAP, or I believe HE, I think is the alternate ammo yeah. type on this ship. And uh, Austin has this amazing uh, reload booster, right? And that's what its thing is. <laughs> yeah, um, it has I was just looking at that. I didn't know that. Yeah. 75 yeah, percent instead oh, yeah, of 50 you didn't realize that it's i knew it had thing, right? i knew it had the yeah. unlimited number i didn't know it was 75 oh yeah it's 75 percent. Oh it's gosh. absolutely it, it absolutely <laughs> is the turns the guns into these lawnmower black you know it's just brap yeah um, and that's oh its gosh. thing that's its thing and it resets i don't know you know you build people build for it if they have an austin captain and i don't know what the recycle on that is because i can't really tell from looking at it in the armory here but you know the recycle on it i should have ship tools up so i can look at more of this stuff but but you know it recycles quick uh, relatively quickly a couple of minutes two three minutes something like that um you know probably closer to three if you build like that too is yeah two, I, don't, I don't know it doesn't say here but um, maybe if chat knows you guys could drop in yeah. how quickly the reload booster comes back yeah and, <laughs> and austin has um has torpedoes but i believe they're similar to atlanta's torps and that they're relatively short range um yeah. like four and a half so it doesn't have like flint torpedoes Austin has hydros, which is nice. It has defensive AA. And because it's like that dual purpose ultralight like American cruiser, yeah. um, it has good AA as much as in that you could say anything has good AA. And I you preface that. I feel like I'm, you know, like Flamu or somebody when I say that. Well, you don't really have good AA in the game at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, I know, because I know. you know, people don't think that a carrier should be able to get a drop off. Well, you know, it, it, it for game balance right. reasons, it, that, yeah, they have to. Like, we it has it. pretty good AA. So, so like if you're if you like if you like that Atlanta Flint Schumfon, I, I'm probably saying that wrong. We always get corrected. Um, uh, <laughs> We've Sejon, Jinan, all kind of this like uh, light light American. The upcoming uh, tier eight San Diego. Um, you know, I, I can't talk a ton about San Diego again because of being in test, but. But if you look up the stats for San Diego, some of some have tried to say that San Diego is is the, as a tier eight Austin because again that's mm. an American you know light cruiser all Atlanta with SAP right and so so this this is really the 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 
I want to say pinnacle of that for the Americans, right? It's a steel ship. It seems to be um, the top of the heap of that concept. This crazy DPM when that main battery reload booster is going. Now, the downside that I've heard time and time again from players that have the ship is that when the main battery reload isn't going, then it's kind mm -hmm. of a it doesn't feel that great. It doesn't, you know, because you're in this like, I don't know, what's it got? Like maybe 30 something thousand hit points. It's not, you know, many, you're. Yeah. It does have a nice armor strip down the side that makes it a little bit more capable than like an Atlanta, but you know, you're still probably going to get trashed if you got caught out. It doesn't have smoke. It doesn't have radar. Um, it's kind of a, it definitely is a one trick pony with that main battery reload boost. And that we had, a, you know, so I, I just real ahead. quick, we had a comment in chat about the torpedo range. Brezkov said they were 9.2s. Crimson Tide said they were 10.5s. I just looked up to make sure there are 10.5 kilometer torpedoes on. Oh, that's so, cool. So no they're a little idea. bit better think, than we thought. That's cool. Yeah. In fact, I think the other day when we were playing clans, there was an Austin and I asked our clan mates, hey, what's the torpedo range on that? Usually I'm not the guy that has to ask that stuff. But it's a ship that neither you nor um, I have. So we got to. And, and, and I questions. believe our clan mates told me they were four and a half. So I'm glad that I didn't get torped out by one. <laughs> during clan uh, battles. Yeah, during clan battles. Uh, yeah. That sucked. But that would have been um, bad news. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the 10 and a half kilometer torpedoes make, makes me actually kind of want Austin more than I used to. It, 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 we were yeah, we talking both about learned something today, didn't we? <laughs> we? We were talking about where these ships fall in, like our rankings. Again, I, six steel ships that I don't have. Um, I probably have Austin fifth uh, on my on my Does shopping list. Does that mean list. Ragnar has moved ahead? Or no, no, Ragnar's Plymouth, still sixth. Plymouth is fourth. Plymouth is fourth. Okay, yeah, for me. okay. Oh, we're getting your fourth. ordering. Yeah, we're getting it figured that. out. Yeah. I'm going to buy Stalingrad like this week when the coupon comes out. So Stalingrad's first, but um, I'm not super good at these like light cruisers. Uh, so I would feel like if I bought this, I would just be somebody else's pinata. Yeah. Um, you'd I, potato I, it I out. Yeah. I hear you. I don't think it's a ship that you can use in competitive. I don't know. I maybe you can use it in ranked. And it's been so long since I efforted ranked to get to the league where people play tens. I mean, I don't I know if you can play this in ranked. <laughs> I doubt it. I think Austin is probably an exclusive arms race ship because oh <laughs> boy, yeah, you only want to be an arms race with it so you can get the constant forever heal and the thing that makes you shoot faster. And then it just becomes a license to print points and experience points as far as yeah. I can tell. Or it's going to be one of those. Things, yeah, it turns out someday they'll be like, well, Austin was the king of convoy mode. Yeah, you know, yeah it'll it'll be like, you know, for, you know, how there's ships that are like the Narai ship. This is going to be the. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is, this is a Weimar, but for something else. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I think I think, again, though, like, you know, just if you like that light U.S. cruiser with shells that you can rain over an island, I will say one cool thing about this one is that with that sap is great. Um, but it yeah. also has HE, so you can. You, I'm certain you could probably farm fire damage as well. Um, it, it, you know, you can because the guns are small enough. You can take that three point cruiser captain skill that gives you a 10 percent damage buff without a, a penalty to your concealment. So I think it'd be really fun to yeah. play. I wouldn't mind playing one. I would mind if I had to buy one with my steel. That's hard to earn right now. That's the um, problem is I think this is a cool ship, but man, yeah. do I not want to spend my hard earned steel on it? It doesn't mean that I would never. It just it's with other choices because I don't have every boat. It's hard to rate this one up top. Um, a couple of comments from chat. Big Data says for me, Austin is second. Oh my gosh, Kevy is showing up with a hell of a raid. We'll talk about that in a minute. Welcome Raiders, please find a seat. Uh, Big Data says for me, Austin is second after Ragnar because I like to play light. Uh, I like hard to play light cruisers. Uh, Big Data is a radar minnow fan, so this fits right in in my view of that. Uh, Atari says, is Austin an Atlanta class island spammer? I don't think it's the same class, but I think in concept that works. Kevaseeb is here. Kevaseeb is a North American CC and just dropped an immense raid on us. Welcome everyone. Apparently we got some pizza slices for y'all. Uh, please come on in. We are talking steel ships today. I hope you guys have a heck of a good time with us. Um, I'm going to jump right back to talking ships, but please raiders, welcome. We want you to feel loved and welcome to join us here. I make a good targets throwing down some emotes up in here. What's up target? Um, I think that's kind of the tail end of our Austin discussion. I mean, I, if I was to say Austin is sort of in the middle of the pack for me, I don't play a lot of battleships and we have like four battleships that I don't have on the steel list. Um, I do think Austin is interesting, but I think it's a boat I would get and I'd play and I'd be like, that's neat. And then I don't know if I'd play it a ton. 
Kevy, thank you a ton for the raid, you legend. I hope you had a fantastic stream. You won battles and had a great time with your viewers. We'll try to take good care of them. Um, I do think it's interesting, and I don't know if I'll make the foolish mistake of buying it, but I do think it's interesting. So who knows? We'll see uh, as we go. It's, for me, I would, I'm going to guess without really having an ordering, it's like third, maybe fourth for me. Um, so let's back out of Austin and we'll move on to our next ship. So for those of you guys just joining us, we've talked about Plymouth, Ragnar, and Stalingrad. If you missed that and you're interested, check the VOD later on, or I'm going to wind up putting this on my YouTube channel. You can check it out at Clyde Plays on YouTube, just youtube.com slash C slash Clyde Plays, or you can just go to YouTube and search for Clyde Plays World Warships and all of my content will pop up. Okay, after Austin, the next cheapest ship is Borgonia. This is definitely one that you should talk about because I know that you like this boat, Scott. You want to open us up on Borgonia? Sure, Borgonia was the first steel ship that I bought. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's a, I think it's a great deal at that 30,000 steel price point uh, compared to some of the other choices. Borgonia also kind of long in the tooth. I, I, I'm guessing that the order of steel ship releases, other than the non-tier 10s, with something like Stalingrad, Summers, Borgonia, something like that. I feel like Borgonia has been around for a really long time. Um, yeah, it's pretty old. I think it was second or third. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Borgonia uh, ultimately is an Alsace, uh, which is the tier nine French uh, tech tree battleship. And you're like, well, it's tier 10. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it, it is a pre nerf Alsace. I will say if you look in your world of warships history, um, Alsace itself currently has a pretty wonky dispersion. Borgonia does not. Um, Borgonia's guns are relatively accurate. The range is extremely long, uh, considering um, you know the the type of ship it is. It does have smaller caliber guns like Alsace. It's basically the Alsace hull, 32, yeah. 32 millimeter of armor everywhere, which nowadays is like wow, that can get overmatched by all kinds of things. You know, well, sure. Um, but Borgonia's guns just feel good, and French armor is trolly and has black holes that lose that you lose shells into, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Borgonia doesn't have as many hit points as as Shikishima or um, Incomparable would be my guess. I'm thinking it probably has less than Incomparable. It definitely has less than a lot of other tier ten battleships. It has less than Republique, uh, which would be its you know French analog. Um, what's cool about Borgonia, right? Well, Borgonia's fast. Um, it moves pretty quick for a battleship and it has a speed boost because that's great. Uh, it has yeah. main battery reload booster. So if you get a good shot on somebody, you can hit main battery reload booster and get another good shot in a relatively short period of time. Um, even though it has 380s, uh, you can play Burgonia's AP because it has great velocity on its AP and the pen's good. You can damage a lot of battleships. You can definitely take down cruisers with it uh, at tier 10. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you those can, 380s also, are great for cruisers. They're great, and you can, but but it has a great fire chance as well. And I think mm. people might sleep on that a little bit. Uh, you can be a jerk, you know, British style battleship player, and you can fire and you can spam uh, fireballs with it too, and just and spam for HE. Um, <clears throat> you can build Borgonia for secondaries if you're insane. Uh, it's secondaries <laughs> reach really. It's secondaries reach really far. Uh, yeah, like if you're a crazy a person. They don't. They're they're small Go caliber and they're not as accurate as a German secondary. But I have built my Burgonia for secondaries before for fun. Um, yeah, for and fun and, and it is and, and it is a fun build, uh, especially uh, you know if, when with the newer captain skill where um, as they longer they're locked onto target, the more accurate they get. They yeah, still don't get yeah. as accurate as a Schlieffen, but nothing does right. But they they're not they're not horribly inaccurate once they get dialed in. Uh, and they set a lot of fires. Uh, they don't. They don't do a lot of pen damage, right? Because they're pretty small caliber. So um, I love Borgonia. I really do. I, my, it's a funny thing with Borgonia. If you go look up Borgonia on, on like Wow stats, it's one of those ships that has like an insane um, damage gonna, number yeah, for the yeah. for the folks that play it, right? Um, because the people that had it have had it for a long time tend to be really good at it. Um, I think it's less popular maybe today than it once was, but I. I I got it first because I was more of a battleship player at the time, but also just because I like French battleships and I don't like Republique very much. I really liked Alsace. And so I was like, wow, I can, I can play Alsace again at tier 10, sign me up. And yeah. it's, it's just Alsace, but better. Um, and that's a fun recipe for me. So from my point of view, um, it's just a fun ship. And I think at the price, it's pretty good with a coupon. What's it like 22, 20, like, you know, if you, uh, yeah. out that, what is it? 30? Is so it'd be it like is? 20 yeah it's 30 so, so what would it be, be like 24 yeah you'd, you'd take off 7500 right so it'd yeah. be uh 
whatever that is, 30 yeah. to 50 or 2250. Yeah. 2250. So cheap, cheap, cheap. I, I don't know. I, I really dig it. But again, um, in competitive, do you see a lot of them? No, not a ton. Right. I've played it in clans before, but that was more just because we don't have like, you know, we're not a Unicom clan, so we can kind of just do what we want sometimes. And um, <laughs> but well, it's sometimes not, we're it, we're lacking people with all the meta ships and we go just play yeah. something that you're good at. And we do our yeah. best, right? And so, that, but you're right; it's not really a meta ship for top tier Typhoon League clans. Um, but but Burgundy is funny. Like even for me, like Burgundy is one of those ships in my port that I have like a terrible randoms win rate on, and I have not played it as many times as it is. I have too many ships, so like I don't have like a ton of games in anything. But um, right, right. Burgundy is one of those ships where I have like a really bad like a win rate in, but I think my my average damage on it's still really good. <laughs> Because yeah, it just yeah. it just with the reload booster and the the comfort I have with the way the weapon systems on it work, um, it's it's uh, it it plays well for me. So I would say if you like French battleships, if you like uh, relatively quick battleships uh, that are relatively maneuverable, mm. um, and I think yeah. it, I think it brings a lot to the table. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. I to be fair, like I tell everybody, I'm like I'm not a battleship main, whatever, but um. I this is my number one boat, I think, for this coupon. I think I'm going to get Burgonia. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, and, you know, it's funny because you you gave the Alsace story. Everybody I know who's played the French battleships goes you, they, you go, hey, what do you think of the Alsace? And they go, oh, loved Alsace. Best boat. Love that boat so much. I don't know anybody who didn't like Alsace. You know, so like there's something special there. And like you said, you, you've you got the opportunity to play that up at tier 10 with a reload booster. Why wouldn't you? Uh, Burgonia, again, being as old as it is, we talked earlier about are they going to pull Stalingrad? Are they ever going to pull these old boats? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but that's another factor that I've kind of had in the back of my mind for the last two coupons. So for me, I'm seriously considering a Burgonia pick. I don't know if I will. I've been sitting here. I've got, as you can see on the screen, I've got 38,000 steel. So I'll be able to get this boat or another one of similar price and be pretty well positioned to get another one uh, when the coupon comes back around. So yeah. I don't know. I, I like the idea of Borgonia. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's going to be a solid pick. Sorry, go ahead. You had something. So a lot of fun comments in chat about more Borgonia is fun, right? You can burn ships down if they're about tank, if you're getting stuck in a bow tanking situation. Um, mm. The one of the reasons that people like Alsace and one of the reasons I think that Borgonia is even more likable because the accuracy is that you do have those eight barrels forward with the two uh, two turrets with four, right? So yeah. in those situations, you've got it's a 12 gun battleship, which is always nice. But um, if you're only using the front guns, it's still an eight gun battleship, which is always is nice as well. Mm. Um, but the shell velocity is really workable, even at ranges when you're you, when you're firing at 20 plus with Morgonia, you're still I'm still able to land hits at least because the shell velocity is really good. Um they don't the drag on the shells isn't horrible. They it's not like American battleship shells that just take forever to get somewhere. The French battleship shells move. And 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 we talked about how it's 380s and 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 like you said with 380s like I'm not going to I'm not going to go out and overmatch uh you know a uh, Preussen or whatever with those 380s, but uh, one thing I'm going to have a much better time with is is fighting cruisers and not getting uh, overpens as much, which is like, yeah, uh, you know, I just, the overpen, right? You know, you, you talk all these battleships with all these 457s and five 460s and 508s and 510s and whatever we have now. Mm -hmm. But gee, Willikers, man, when you're playing those battleships and you <laughs> shoot at some broadside Des Moines and overpens and you're like, are you kidding me? Like. Uh, you you just don't get that as much with the 380s. They tend to fuse and, and they tend to explode uh, in yeah. a ship a little bit more, which is nice. Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna hammer through the bow of a Preussen with it, but that's you know it's HE's mm -hmm. good. And you know the with the main battery reload boost, even using that AP into superstructures is still really strong. <laughs> Crown Vic says, "Yeah, you get shatters and non pans instead. Sometimes you do, right? And so it's a it's a trade off for sure uh, with, with any of those three eighty ships. Everybody who plays Battleship of any gun caliber, you you know, like <laughs> I got this great salvo lined up, and you fire, and you oh, land three good. shells. It's two overpens and one ricochet, or one mm -hmm. ricochet, one shatter, and one overpen. <laughs> and you're like, how is that possible? What am I?" Like what? What did I shoot at that that wasn't a citadel? Right? It, it's just uh, it's just kind of silly that way. Crown Vic says, "All due respect to the smooth talker." I think he's talking about you. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, you talked earlier about how it's a maneuverable ship and stuff. And I like ships that can move around, battleships that move around and they're they're a little more nimble like that. I don't mind a battleship with smaller guns either. I, that tends to work for my play style. And that's because I'm coming from more of a destroyer cruiser mentality. And so sometimes I play my battleships wrong. And so a ship like Bourgogne is, I think, is a natural fit for me and other ships that are similar. You know, the, the German battle cruisers that kind of do some of that work. Um, I play hood that way, which maybe I shouldn't, but I do anyway, that kind of stuff. But anyway, that's that's our, I think that's a pretty good overview of Bourgogne. Scott, I think I appreciate you sharing your uh, your thoughts there, because I know there's a boat you've had for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. So thanks for taking the point on that one. Yeah, I look forward to you getting it so that we can we have a fun we have a fun memory where we ran a flank oh, yeah. in a match together <laughs> where I was in Borgonia and you were in Venezia and speed wise I was able to keep up with you and then you were out in front a little bit so you would pop your smoke and then I'm trailing in your smoke and we were just shooting fools as we came around that flank and it's a fond memory. And so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully if you get uh, Borgonia soon, maybe we can go the other direction. And Repeat that the roles, other way. Try it out. Reverse rolls. That was a fun match we played with Aerospace. I don't think we were divved, but we popped in and happened to be in the same oh, match yeah, as him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Aerospace so, was on our team. For that Aerospace right. was in, I think he was in a gunboat destroyer, just burning he was, fools. And yeah, he's he, out here he rodeo work. clowning for us <laughs> while we're like running him. around. This. It was a hoot. It was an yeah. absolute hoot. Okay. We're running around in your smoke and he was spotting for us. That was a good time. It was just glorious. Uh, glorious play. Incomparable is about neither of us have. So I'll take a shot at it here. And then uh, actually, yeah, I'll take a shout out. So Incomparable is a British, I guess this is a battle cruiser. Um, it's it's kind of a different formula than what we're expecting on uh, like the, the, the German battle cruisers, because this one has huge 508 millimeter guns. It does have torpedo launchers, uh, dual quadruple tube torpedo launchers. Uh, that can launch single torpedoes at a time. Uh, it comes with acoustics, a speed boost, a super heel. I mean, what doesn't this ship have? I guess radar. The other thing it doesn't have is very many guns. So yes, it's got 508s, but it only has six of them. Uh, so I, I will say, guys, in chat, I'm not going to be able to give you the best assessment of this ship because I don't have it. Neither does Scotta. Uh, but I mean, Comparable is another one that I'm kind of considering somewhat seriously. I really like Repulse. One thing I don't like re about Repulse is the low gun count. That six guns is not my favorite thing on Repulse, which is why I would choose Hood over Repulse most of the time. Hood is just like Repulse, but with two more turrets, more or less. A couple different other differences as well. But Incomparable is, uh, and it was really popular when it first came out. I think people were pretty stoked about Incomparable um, when it arrived on the scene. And we saw a lot of them in battle. And yeah, they deleted stuff. Um, so like I say, I think the pros for it really are those large guns. The overmatch capability is definitely there. Um, I don't know a ton about the dispersion there. Um, so I don't know if, I, I'm going to guess it's going to have a little bit of dispersion. Now, if you guys in chat know if, if it's particularly laser targeted, accurate, or otherwise, let us know. Um, that's kind of my, and, and I realize that's a brief assessment of incomparable. I do think it's intriguing. I like fast battleships. I like the idea of a super heal. I like the idea of torpedoes. So this one's probably like third on my list, maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe fourth, but, uh, Sofa King says, uh, Trend Last says it is very accurate. So that is, a uh, you know, three steps away from Clyde saying that, but that's, uh, I appreciate that Sofa, appreciate it. Scott, what, what's your read on Incomparable? You fought against them, you've seen them out there. Um, what are your thoughts yeah. on, on this ship? Uh, incomparable, I was, so for me it was, do I want to get Stalingrad this time or do I want to get Incomparable? Um, mm. I decided on Stalingrad and honestly, I, the reason I decided on that was with the announcement of the um, Puerto Rico dockyard returning. Right. Um, I have Puerto Rico, uh, so, they said uh, when that dockyard returns, if you work the dockyard and, and finish it and you already have Puerto Rico, uh, you'll be given the opportunity to get any steel ship or any research ship, uh, I suppose, or any coal ship, but yuck, um, that you want to get. And so I decided uh, uh, I would use my steel and my coupon to buy Stalingrad, which is cheaper. And then I will work the Puerto Rico dockyard to get incomparable later this year when they allow me to do that. Hopefully they follow through with that. If they don't, I'll get incomparable next time I can, right? Um, I think incomparable is really interesting. Another one of the, like you mentioned, the number of guns I, I sometimes will, and I've, I've been known to say this, I don't like six gun battleships that aren't Georgia. Um, and so <laughs> I do so like I, the qualifier there. <laughs> yeah. Georgia's rad. But so like one of the things that bothers me about the concept of incomparables is a six gun battleship. Um, that starts to feel bad when you 
fire a salvo and maybe you only hit one or two shells it feels it feels really bad if you can't get the third turret involved and you're only shooting four guns um, yeah, I'm, I actually pulled up Incomparable on Ship Tool because I wanted to look at some of the numbers on it just because I'm not super familiar with it, right? So okay. um, Incomparable has 70,000 base hit points. Um, thank God it has that super heal, right? Um, it has a maximum speed of 33 knots. Uh, that's pretty good because then with speed boost, it's probably going to trip up to, what, 37 in that ballpark. Um, Incomparable accelerates... Uh, like a like a tesla it, it gets to full power in 40 seconds that's really great um it it has a uh, base detection of 13.5 that's amazing right so if you have base detection of 13.5 and you're built for concealment the concealment on it's going to be you know epically good um we've seen a lot of people who play it uh in videos people like yeah. trend loss people really good players right it gets it has incredibly great concealment this is a battleship that in a build uh, you would build for concealment. I would build into brisk uh, so that I was moving faster as well when I was unseen. I think it's really powerful for sneaking up and making those kind of plays. Um, and you kind of have to because it's uh, its base gun range is 17.6. Um, that's probably the lowest base gun range of any of these steel battleships. That feels uh, like a tier eight battleship, tier seven battleship range. Yeah, and so that's a really, the, the base reload is 29 seconds and that range is 17.6. So in slot six, I'm probably slotting reload so I can get the reload down to like 26, 25. Yeah, maybe. But you, you, you might want to slot range there if you think you can hit with those six shells at 20, but you're probably not going to because it's only six shells. And so I want to, I want more bites at the apple, and because it's yeah. so sneaky, you're. This is a battleship that you're gonna, I assume, end up playing between eleven and fifteen. I was gonna say fifteen. 16. Yeah. So and so maybe then you're okay and, up there with, and you want that reload instead, and that. So you probably want that reload, but then there's the other rub. You've got torpedoes, but it's a battle cruiser with seventy thousand base hit points. So it's and it's British, so it's not brawly. So now I'm a tier ten, and I've got seventy thousand base hit points, and my guns don't shoot super far and they don't reload at 20 seconds they reload closer to 30 so i've got to build it a certain way and i can sneak in and i can try to make something happen and there's these 508 so they're going to overmatch everything right i'm going to punish people if i get a look at them i'm going to get rip a hold of them up. <laughs> but yeah. i think you, when i when i when i think about a ship like this i think about what it's going to play against right and so um what else has a low concealment and is a battle cruiser and is in the tech tree that's the schlieffen um, Schlieffen doesn't have guns that big, but it's got secondaries that are really strong. And if I get close enough to use my guns, am I running the risk of also being inside of Schlieffen secondary range, right? And that's a problem I wouldn't want to have in a ship like this. I think you'd be trying to get away, kite away and do different things. But again, that's all just speculation. And that's probably based on my play style. Somebody who hasn't comparable will probably tell me you're a potato and I go in and I crush people like that. And that could be, <laughs> and I mean, might, I've rolled, right? And that's okay. I've, I've rolled up with, uh, with, uh, with cruisers and fought Schlieffen's up close and you can get a job done because they're not that well armored as it turns out. So I think there's a lot of stats on it, yeah. you know, vertical dispersion on it's 80 meters. That's better than conquer, but not by a ton. Sigma's 2.0. So the shells aren't unaccurate. Okay. I mean, it's relatively that's decent. Accurate. Yeah. That's, that's a you solid know, flight, number. Flight time at 12 kilometers is 6.7. If I push that up to 15 kilometers, it's 8.7, right? Ooh. So the shells are not rip fast. The shells are slower than Conquer, but they're bigger. I mean, you're mm -hmm. lobbing school buses. So, yeah. Um, one thing I, what, one other thing I noticed on this when I was looking at the main battery stats, and this is, uh, this, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody talk about with Uncomparable. And so I may be wrong, right? It actually has the lowest AP DPM of any of the British battleships at tier 10 on the uh, on the WoW shipping tool right now, or the WoW ship tool. That makes sense, two, though, because of the know, number of barrels, right? <laughs> right, number of barrels, right? Yeah. It has it has woefully low HE DPM comparatively, right? Well, So if yeah. you look at, like, Conqueror's HE DPM is 172,800. Thunderer's is 151,385, right? Um, Incomparables is 91,000 and change. And that's the number of barrels in the time of the reload, right? So when you think of, when I think about British battleship play, um, I think about spamming HE. I don't know that that this is a ship that you want to do that kind of play in either. Yeah. It feels like that's not the purpose of incomparable. I don't, I think you yeah. get in, I think you're right about the getting in closer, spending time with your torpedoes and those 508s 
against yeah. tough targets and overmatching and everything because you've got 508s right well and hopefully yeah. you can find battleships up there and then you don't overmatch so much but then you've got that super heal to recover from fires and stuff like that I, well overmatch you know. not overpen right i mean over oh i'm sorry you said overmatch like, yes yes overmatch I, those 508s, yes. you're overmatching yes uh, you, yes can't sorry i heard overpen i you used yeah. the term so i so it's not it's not an he spammy british ship by the looks of things um no i think it's a different build. i think it's an interesting ship I've obviously seen guys like Trenlass who love it, but Trenlass again, is a for big me, fan. Yeah, big uh, fan. For me, uh, for me, I'm not in a, as much a hurry <laughs> to get it. I'm I'm looking forward to getting it, mm. and 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 I'm just not in a, as much a hurry to get it. Plus, I kind of want to wait and see. Um, there's a British battle cruiser line uh, yeah. being introduced being yeah. introduced to the game. I can't talk about those ships. I've because I've played them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'd, I'd also, I also would just suggest it, maybe waiting and seeing if, if you can try a tech tree ship for free, um, you might, you might find that uh, they have a similar playstyle. I don't know, uh, having not played incomparable, but you might find it as a similar playstyle, and you might just be satisfied enough with one you didn't have to spend steel on. Yeah, and that's actually a strategy I've been talking about employing um, for sure. I've been interested in those ships. If you guys have uh, seen the news article or news uh, videos, we've done news live streams and those have went, found their way over to YouTube where we've talked about a bunch of those boats. Um, you know, I'm intrigued by that line. I like battle cruiser play. I like nimble battleships. This one has a speed boost. I don't know, if, you know, I can't remember the, the particulars of those. And we'll talk about those later when, when we have more um, data at my fingertips. But um, so I'm intrigued by the tech line too. And that's another thing where I think this is a relatively new steel ship. I can, I can wait on it, you know, and, and we'll see kind of what's going on. Um, as the, yeah. as the time happens, it's got, it's got great consume, you know, it's got the, the, super, the you know, mega repair party. Um, but it only gets two. Mm -hmm. Uh, it only comes with two, right? So if you want, you, you've got to spend points to get three of those heels if you need them. Uh, it has hydros, but they're short range. They're three kilometer ship detect hydros, so they're really they're really torpedo protection hydros, really. And again, yeah, you only yeah. get three uses. It has engine boost. It's <laughs> a it's a plus eight percent speed change engine boost. Uh, again, you only get three of them out of the box. Um, you can take spotter on it. Uh, you're probably gonna for the you know that's one of those ships where you pop spotter pop spotter at the beginning and take some pot shots at 22 or 21 or whatever when you can, and then you don't ever really use it again because you got in closer. So, right. you know, some of the, some of the, again, some of the consumables on it, a little light in only having two heels out of the box, only having the three hydros. I mean, if I'm going to, or the three speed boosts, how many of those am I really going to use in a match? Um, I know I've gone through many heels. I know those are super heels, but still, with 70,000 hit points, um, depending on what kind of damage you're taking, you might want more than two of those uh, ship printers. Um, yeah. Hard to say. Um, I Hojoy in uh, chat said, hey, is there a mod that shows me these new ships? Um, the answer is yes, kinda. Um, if you get the, uh, there's a list of mods that I have in my Discord. It's a pinned message under the Ship Talk channel. If you guys wanna join the Discord, you can check that out. I'll drop the link in here for you. I think I spelled Discord correctly. Um, the name of the mod, I think, is the uh, Ship Tr Tech Tree Vertical. And then is there a separate mod that shows the Welcome other ships? Scotta, do you know? I'm looking at my list here. I think that mm -hmm. one is the one that does it. Um, and yeah, right now the, the those or, tech tree, there's a tech tree vertical and there was a tech tree horizontal for a while. Yeah. Just, I don't know. It depends on what you want to look at. Right. Uh, by the way, thank you for the follows. Sigismack, Mr. Uh, Hirono, Stampanier, and Vince just now. Thanks and welcome. Um, the only two of the new British battle cruisers that are in there right now is Collingwood, which is going to be the tier seven. I think that one's going to be the premium. And then St. Lawrence, which is the tier 10. So you can preview those and look at those, uh, preview those and look at those if you'd like. Um, but it kind of depends on what's actually in the build that you're running. Uh, so it, every new ship, no, but sometimes you'll see new ships over there and you can check them out when you go over uh, to the right hand side of that tech tree. Um, the next ship on our list is Mecklenburg. Um, Scott, this is another one you can't really talk too much about. So I'll speak to Mecklenburg. Um, and then, you know, if there are some comments that you are able to make later on, we'll go ahead and share that with you. What's up, bruh? Turn right, Claude. Oh, man, I'm going to have to. I, I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, I was about to say Carbine Carlito. 
I should say jingles, but I should tell him thank you. I'm not even the Clyde you were talking about, and I got a lot of turn rights. So Mecklenburg is a, uh, a brand new steel ship. This one really, really recently just came out and landed in the game. You can get it here. 16 305 millimeter guns. Uh, and it is a, uh, it's like I said, it's a steel ship. It's got a hull repair, no torpedoes, no acoustics. That is a huge difference between Mecklenburg and other German battleships and battle cruisers that we have in the game. Uh, I'm trying to get the answer to Crown Vic's question, which is, what is the reload? One moment, please. I can tell you. Uh, the reload on this thing is 26 seconds stock with no modules, no captain, no nothing. Um, I don't have the ship, so I don't have a custom build for it or anything, but I'm just looking at it here in the port. Um, so 26 seconds, is that what I just said? Yeah, yeah 26 that's seconds. Right. Um, so Mecklenburg, 26 seconds, 16 guns at 26 seconds. Uh, I actually like the idea of a small caliber battleship. I do wish that this thing had acoustics. That is one thing that makes me a little bit shy about Mecklenburg and also Brandenburg. Um, which are which is kind of similar in construction in that it has smaller guns, no acoustics. Uh, I think the secondaries are fine on this, but not necessarily anything to write home about, is my understanding from reading the uh, the blog articles. Um, I think it's designed, you know, they, they kind of, are, I think, are expecting us to do a lot of AP work against lighter armored targets, things like cruisers with this. Um, the gun range I have here as well is 22 kilometers. So I think you could actually do reasonable cruiser work. Um, I'm imagining that unlike a lot of German ships, you might consider, uh, oh, does it have torpedoes, War Daddy? Yes, it does. Thank you. Two, two quadruple torpedo launchers. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I actually think you could probably do some HE work with this just because of the sheer volume of shells. And Frost Knight is telling me it's got a 2.1 Sigma. Uh, which honestly, if that's the case, you can work at that 20 plus kilometer range as well. So, you know, I, I think the Mecklenburg could be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of German ship fans who are going to rush out and pick this one up. I suspect we'll see a lot of Mecklenburgs, if only because it's so new when the coupon resets. Uh, Crown Vic says yeah, it's good. Uh, I, I, are you talking about the Sigma or the ship? Um, I, thank you again, War Daddy, for commenting on the torpedoes. I missed those. I was looking down here for consumables and I... Uh, I should have looked. Yes, it is going to have a lack, but it's going to have 16 shells, right? If you really want to do HE Mega 16 shell spans, Marlboro might be a better ship for you. Um, but this one, I think you could probably still get away with HE just because of the amount of hell you're going to be able to rain down with 16 shells. Um, and I'll kind of leave it at that. We're having some good conversation here in uh, in chat. Word Daddy's commenting that the HE pen is going to be 76 millimeters, um, which that's decent. So. Uh, Scott, any any Mecklenburg comments or, or things that you're able to say? I don't want you to get too close to the uh, NDA concerns, of course. Those are, those I are wanna, wanna, yeah. Me it, my situation's odd um, because I'm not allowed to give impressions on ships I've played unless it's after release, and I have not played this ship after release because it's a steel ship. Right. I have probably I probably had at least a hundred thousand base XP in this ship in test. So I played it a lot and I can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> it's uh, what I, I will say, what I will, what I would say to anybody who asked me about Mecklenburg when I was playing it, it is a tier 10 German battleship. <laughs> it does uh, have eight. Uh, <laughs> if you want to stop there, that's fine. If you know, I, well, I can look at, I'm looking at ship tool, right? And so, so again, like to reiterate some of the high points on it. I was going to um, comment on the shell velocity. It, that's if you compare good. it, it's main battery to the other, other three tier 10 German battleships. Um, it has the longest base range, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it has obviously the most barrels because it has all these crazy 305s. <laughs> um, yeah. It has the best Sigma at 2.05. In fact, if memory serves, and I might be wrong, but if memory serves, I believe it has battle cruiser dispersion. Mm -hmm. um, shell flight time is rivals uh, Preussen uh, and is better than Kurfürst and Schlieffen, uh, or not as good as Schlieffen, but better than Kurfürst. Um, so the shells, uh, they're not floaty. They're very usable. The initial um, velocity is 865 meters per second, which I think is, that is pretty workable for real. Yeah, they're, they're, um, they're, uh, 
you know, AP DPM is obviously the best, but again, that's a, that's an effect of, of having all those guns. So it's not, I don't know how reusable that AP DPM is. Um, the HE DPM is the best. Again, that's in, because it has all those guns, but it's German AP. So you get quarter pen or German HE, but you're getting all the quarter pen, which is rad. So you can, you can get a lot of damage with that HE, just initial damage, but you don't set a ton of fires because again, it's German, but then you do set more fires than you'd expect. I would assume because there's 16 guns, right? Just the math shakes out that way. Um, other things I would point out in regards to the ship, right? If, if you haven't seen one in game yet, um, health wise, it's 20,000 hit points lighter than a Preussen or a Kerr first. Uh, that's shocking. Um, when you're, when you're in a tier 10, uh, battleship, uh, and it comes in, uh, with that much less hit points, obviously Kerr first and Preussen have a ton of hit points. Um, but Mecklenburg just doesn't, it's in the eighties. And part of that reason is if you go look at pictures of Mecklenburg or examine it in the port, and you're a aficionado of German battleships, you'll recognize the hull is the Frederick de Grossa hull or the same hull as Palmer. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you're playing that hull at tier 10 instead of at tier nine. Um, so that's equates to a lot of the reason why the, why that's, uh, why it has less hit points. Um, but that also means if you're familiar with FDG or Palmer's hull and some of the limitations in its armor schema, they exist on this ship. Um, the, the, turtle back doesn't come down sweepingly low you can turn at high speeds and you can lift your side up and you can catch citadels stuff like that people eh, people know these things about fdg and price and we don't need to reiterate them but mecklenburg mecklenburg has that hull um it does not right. have the curve first hull you mentioned the secondaries and you, you can build into secondaries on mecklenburg and it's as effective as you would expect and interestingly enough it has um it has a decent secondary package it has 12 by uh 12 secondary turrets that are all two barrel and they're all 128 um, which is good. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't have one Oh five. So you don't necessarily have to worry about like, well, if I was going to build into secondaries, do I have to take IFHE? Um, it has one twenty eight, So you're, you're not super gap there. The one twenty eight is without IFHE. That means though that because of the German quarter pen, that they'll pen 32 millimeters, which frankly, uh, is probably good enough for government work. You probably don't need to worry about having some kind of weird Mecklenburg captain. That's got IFHE like a Schlieffen captain would, but maybe your Schlieffen captain would be built different because the battle cruisers play different. At least mine would be. Um, I would suggest on Mecklenburg, you'd use more of a Kerfurst or a Preussen captain. Um, but again, you might use, you know, you might have an extra captain like we, you and I do, and you might be able to do some kind of slightly different build. Um, yeah, I, th I think if somebody really wanted to optimize, there might be a tweak or two. I, yeah. For me, I'd have to really study this ship, and I think it might come yeah. down to some secondary differences and, and things of that nature for sure. But. Yeah. And again, and, and you mentioned it and it, it does have torpedoes, which none of, you know, other than Schlieffen, they don't, but it's more like, um, you know, more like torping off of a turp. It's right through the six kilometer, uh, torpedo launchers that are back on your flank, uh, your, not your flanks on the hips, kind of back on that part of the ship. They, they, so, so you're going to have relatively good torpedo angles in a brawling situation. Um, you know, it, it, they're they're usable brawling uh, torpedoes. It's not like on Schlieffen where you're just dumping them because they're long range. Um, they're the they're the closer range torpedoes. Um, another thing I would point out if you're looking at the statistics on it are the anti aircraft stats. Um, I don't know if they mention it in the color text. I believe it was in the dev blogs originally. Uh, but Mecklenburg actually has like the best AA strength of any German tier ten battleship at seventy three. The rating um, and its AA is um, said, is. It says 89 in the client. Yeah, it's AA doesn't suck, and and it has uh, defensive crazy. AA. Um, and when you pop, and, and if you can pop that defensive AA, based on 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 the fact that the AA package is much better than those other ships, um, you can surprise aircraft carriers probably with that because it's German and people don't expect it to have good AA, but it does. Yeah, that probably would be a surprise for you know for carrier captains who don't also play battleships and know this ship in particular. Yeah. Frost Knight says, I might slap my GK captain on her. I think that's a great place to start, honestly. I don't know if it, you, you know, you may decide that you need something special there, but I think for most players in most situations, that would totally work, you know, for it's any a, of these German ships, really. It's well, a bummer any, that it doesn't, a it's a bummer that it doesn't have hydros and, and that, uh, that does that slow me are, down. You're used to having hydros on a lot of those high tier German battleships, and obviously the battle cruisers have them. And so it's a bummer that it doesn't have hydros, but it's not the only German battleship that doesn't have hydros. And Turpitz, uh, like you, Brandenburg. Like, Turpitz, Brandenburg, uh, PEF. I don't think yeah, it's hydros. PEF does not. Um, and if true. you look at if you if you look at again at what was announced today, um, well, when we're we're taping this on 
June 9th. Um, the Arnholt, I believe the name of it was, uh, I think they said it also didn't have hydros, uh, and that's a new tier, tier eight premium German battleship that they have in the pipeline. So, um, sometimes there's variations there. Um, obviously if you're brawling, it's nicer to have hydros. Um, but, but, uh, just cause it doesn't, uh, doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Right. Uh, I think, I think, I think statistically, and if you look at the, what comes on Mecklenburg or Mecklenburg, keep calling it Mecklenburger and Mecklenburger um, is fun to say I, mean, I think I think it I think it has a lot to offer and I think at the price point when you're comparing it to uh incomparable at that price point I think they're really giving an interesting choice to folks those are you know kind of some of the newest steel ships uh if you're a battleship captain right are you a German battleship Brawley mm -hmm. are you are you interested in taking the adventure with these with this just boatload of small guns boatload or are, <laughs> or are you looking for six crazy overmatchy guns on a fast battleship? That they really are play? polar opposites, aren't they? Really, they really, really are. they are, right? And so, so I think there's, I think there's some interesting options there. Uh, for me, on my shopping list, um, like I said, Stalingrad was one. Um, Mecklen, Mecklenburg and Incomparable are kind of fighting for two. Uh, right now, I probably have Incomparable at two and Mecklenburg at three on my shopping list. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Both of those rating as high as they are. Um, hang on, I'm sending a quick message into the chat here. But um, yeah, I, I think those two make sense to be where they are on your uh, uh, on your list there. Mecklenburg, I think, is interesting. I think Incomparable is interesting. Both of those are tempting for me. I'm looking at Borgonia as kind of that old classic standby that I've missed out on. And to me, Shikishima, I don't even have Yamato yet. And I've, I've been playing this game for almost seven years. So you can, my eagerness to get to the super top tier Japanese battleships is just not super high. So for me, that one's probably the last, but we'll get to Shikishima very, very soon. In fact, I think we'll get to it now, um, unless you've got any closing thoughts on Mecklenburg, but I think those were kind of them. Uh, from your point of view, and I know you're planning on, on probably picking up Borgonia. Um, probably, yeah. One thing, I one, one boat that you do really like uh, is Odin, and uh, Odin also has uh, small guns. And so, I, yes, I do um, like Odin. And I know you like the way that size gun performs on a German battleship, and I don't think you got Brandenburg I skipped Brandenburg. I do yeah. have Odin. And that's one of the reasons why I think Mecklenburg might be kind of uh, might be kind of a good pickup. It's not a crazy idea yeah. for me. Yeah. I think Bringer think... says Odin. Little hearts. I, yeah, I, I just think I just think I know you like those guns and the way they perform. And so there you're just yeah. getting you're getting more of those guns mm -hmm. all the time. Right. Because there's just there's yeah. just a lot of them on that ship. I think probably for me, Mecklenburg right now, because of that reason. And, and we've talked about this a little bit off stream, although I don't know that I've told you this thought it's kind of crystallizing as we're talking tonight the mecklenburg is probably my second slot of the available ships that are sitting there mm -hmm. it's probably mecklenburg for me maybe it's going like Burgonia, mecklenburg and comparable austin of the four that we've talked about that i don't have yet mm -hmm. um zorn says odin is the best german cruiser ever couldn't agree more uh Although uh, Elar might have some oh. some words for you, well, I, I I have <laughs> opinions on that, but that's a different video. There's a lot of great cruisers from the German nation. Uh, we did have some questions from Hojoy about research bureau ships. Re uh, chat, feel free to to help Hojoy out with that. Um, I'm going to try to push through the rest of these steel ships before we talk about that, just to keep the the conversation focused on steel ships. Uh, but Hojoy, it's not that I don't want to talk about that. I really do. It's just another topic that we're going to hold for another time. Um, okay, so that I think that's our Mecklenburg discussion. Shikishima, I will click on next. I'll kick off with what I've my thoughts on Shikishima. I think people who like a Yamato, they're gonna like a Shikishima. I think people who like a Satsuma, uh, a Satsuma, I guess is how people are saying that, would like a Shikishima. I think people who like a Musashi would probably like a Shikishima. This has 510 millimeter guns, it's got six of them. Um, and uh, that is kind of what it does. I believe my understanding is the uh, the armor profile is very similar, if not the same as somebody correct me in chat if I'm wrong, uh, as Yamato. So it's kind of built to be like a, a big Yamato with giant guns. Um, and I think Shikishima delivers on that promise. I think players who like that Japanese battleship thing are going to get a lot of work done with this boat. What it doesn't have that Incomparable has is 
uh, like the torpedoes and it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have the speed boosts and things like that that make incomparable kind of a little funkier and I love weird battleships so for me like if I'm looking at these two I'm leaning towards incomparable but I think people who really want to lay waste to things in Shikishima definitely could find a way to do that Scott do you know is Shikishima like snipery is it long range is that kind of its claim to fame from your knowledge pool I have Shikishima. Uh, oh, that's true. You do. So, I so forgot I, that you I have, have this one. I, I, I should let you it. kick it off. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I'm actually glad you did. Um, I've seen sure. some similar comments in chat. Um, Shikishima, I regret owning uh, in, in the current meta, but no. uh, they don't. You don't get. You don't get to try out steel ships before you buy them. Uh, There's no at returns. Least I, <laughs> at least I didn't back then, uh, and um, and you don't get to. Uh, you don't. Well, get you to, there's no return yeah. policy. There's no return policy. Um, I saw some comments in chat though, like uh, um, I th Shik so so Shikishima is 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 it a long range sniper in the same way that yamato is yes right um okay. just statistically again I, I i i pulled up ship tool and i'm looking at the main batteries for all three of for i would say all three of the japanese tier 10s but two of them are yamato because rp Yamato comes up um, well and there's actually the tier 9 tier 10 as well musashi <laughs> right musashi in fact musashi is probably my favorite of all of these ships because i have musashi and i have yamato and i have uh shikishima um, all of them have the same base range of 20, or at least the 10s. Shikishima and Yamato both have a base range of 26.6. Yeah, um, I'm seeing that here too. Yeah. Shikishima's reload is three seconds better. It has uh, six barrels instead of nine. Um, three, the, the three seconds doesn't make up for the fact that you don't have extra barrels. It, it's a ripoff in that regret, in that ray. Well, you lost a third of your barrels and right. you got... Um not a third of your reload no, you did not It'd be a 20, 20 second, second reload, reload right right if if shigashima had a 22 second reload or something like that i would like it better it doesn't and i and i have obviously just like on yamato because you build yamato for reload if you build yamato at slot six for range i <clears throat> good, good for you that's crazy uh, but uh you <laughs> that's know crazy I, to you're me. building yeah. that for reload so the reload's lower than 27 it's probably like 25 or something like that and um, War Daddy but, says 24 seconds with the reload yeah, module on shit. Yeah, he's talking. And so, so that's that's fine. But again, it's six. This is this is falls under my cla classifier where I got this ship, and it's like, oh, it's a six gun battleship that's not Georgia. So why did I buy this? Um, one thing that I would say is real was really great about Shikishima for the for the time period that I had it was that it sounds amazing. When you shoot those guns, it just sounds great. The sound effect for those guns is awesome. It um, does sound good, and it sounds good from me and. For me and my destroyer 10 yeah. kilometers away too thank, so I, st thank, I still get to enjoy know, the sound <laughs> but thank thank the maker that they let every uh every plebe that had three tier tens now buy satsuma that has those same sounds and the same guns right and so that that's part of the crux here <laughs> three is, tier tens and 75 million credits to get it out and everything is but that yes, is yes. that is that you can buy satsuma and it has these guns and there are more of them you yeah, get you get eight dumb. barrels and you have the <laughs> f key that makes it makes all the shells land on the same pixel um, oh, so yeah, Satsuma to dumb. me, <laughs> Satsuma to me, like made Shikishima even less desirable. And I, and again, we've talked about steel, the super ships before, and I don't have any mm -hmm. of them cause I'm like against the concept someday I'll have to buy one, but you're protesting for now. If you, if you just look at stuff like APDPM, the raw numbers, you know, uh, Shikishima has got less APDPM than Yamato because it has less barrels. Now I would almost rather play Yamato just because of the number of barrels and I would not choose to play Yamato because I hate things about Yamato. I hate the turret traverse. I don't like the dry. I don't like the way the ship feels when I'm sailing it. I don't like that everybody in their dog knows where to shoot it uh, mm -hmm. to damage it because it's just so well publicized about the cheeks, the front cheeks, the rear cheeks. People know where to shoot them. Um, you told a fun story earlier in the stream about devastating Yamato with Stalingrad guns, right? Stuff like that. So, oh, yeah, it can be done, right? It can I think Shikishima, Shikishima for me, and, and like I said, I have three steel ships, Borgonia, FDR, and Shikishima, and I'm not a carrier main, and I still would rather have FDR. If I could just trade in one of them, it would be Shikishima because mm. it, it, it just it got crept by Satsuma. I think Yamato pound for pounds you're probably just better off playing yamato most of the time yeah uh, tj so. says uh master chief and cry for love shiki master chief i think is an 07 so a high skill player who can ring some some power out of shiki that's that's good and Gryfer is a streamer of course of some note as well so you know there are going to be people out there who are big 
uh, shiki fans. And that's good. Like we want there to be ships that we disagree about. That's good game design because it means that there's things that appeal to a broad audience. So we, I, I, I wanted to kind of make sure we pointed this out. We might not be big shiki fans here. But that doesn't mean that for you, it's a bad boat. Um, now there's, it sounds like we've got a few folks who agree with Scott's assessment that not enough guns is too weak like Yamato. And that's fair, right? We want people to, to be able to I kind of have those different takes on it because I think obviously looking at the, the examples TJ shared with us, there are people who are going to be able to get some work done with Shiki and have a great time with it. For me, it's it's not for me, but neither is Yamato, and yeah. I, I know a lot of people who like Yamato. So yeah, and, um, and I and I'll play it. it I, I have I've played it on stream, and I and I do fine in it for my skill level. Um, I've sure. probably played yeah, it more sure. on stream than I have Yamato just because it's like, oh, I have this thing. I should play it. And there's stuff about it that <laughs> that's fine and that you I do feel like. feel obligated. Oh, well, no. you know, when you invest deal in something. You <laughs> I know. Like, oh, I'm I laughing because I get it. Like, I felt and, that way with know, Plymouth yeah. at first, but I love Plymouth now. Yeah. We're just talking strengths and weaknesses, right? And so, uh, and that's, that's, I just want to make sure we threw that out too. And not to say like, we shouldn't say bad things about this, but we can say whatever we want about this boat. But at the end of the day, like, <laughs> uh, you know, it takes all kinds, right? And so Shiki's got that 26 kilometer plus range. It's got the 510 version of the 460s. It's got the killer sound. If you're a Yamato sniper and you don't think super ships are cool, Shiki's probably the next thing that you get if you don't want to get Satsuma. I think that's probably our, you know, kind of wraps our discussion on Shikishima. Um, FDR is our last boat, 33,000 steel. This one is in your port, Scotta. Do you mind talking about FDR I, to kick Not us only off? is this dumb boat in my port, but I'm pretty sure I bought it without a coupon. <laughs> Legend. Uh, which just Legend. is, you know, just because I don't remember <laughs> what I was thinking. Um, I'm not a CV player a ton, right? Well, I'll play CVs. I, I'm on, uh, make this clear. Like we've talked about this. We both started trying mm. to play CVs because we're like, well, there's nothing else to play. Um, so, <laughs> or nothing yeah. else to level. And so like, I, I've right. gotten all the tech lines to tier eight. Um, and I don't have, like, I don't have midway, right? And FDR is midway. Uh, it's a midway hull. It's a midway class aircraft carrier. It was a real ship. That's cool. Um, it's planes weren't real. They were like a prototype that the U S never produced. There are these crazy planes uh, the flights off Midway are massively large. Uh, the the they're these slow, gigantic, crazy planes. Um, like when you launch a torpedo squadron, I don't know what it what's it launch like fourteen planes or something it's, like that. It's as a destroyer who gets dropped by this thing. Yeah. It feels like they've launched the United States Naval Air Force. Yeah, right. Again, so you, you have these <laughs> everything. These crazy, crazy planes and 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 the torpedoes the you know that's always a thing like it's a battleship player uh you know or when i used to play battleship more i was like oh my god when that ship came out you get dropped by one of these and it's like you got shimmered uh you know because one drop from the torpedo yeah. squadron drops eight torpedoes now they've nerfed it subsequently and the spread on the torpedoes isn't as tight as it used to be so um that's i true. used to be able i used to be able to land like all eight from a drop on a on a gk uh, and the damage is insane. It's it's really good, uh, and it, you you just kind of chortle, um, <laughs> and, and you know, and that's what you get for playing a GK, right? And that's what it was. But like, yeah, um, you know, they made CVs it they've, dropping, yeah, totally yeah. dirtbag stuff. <laughs> like you know, it just drops all these torpedoes. The bombers, oh, you know, the it 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 drops bombs. The it drops HE bombs, kind of like a British carrier, where it carpet bombs these HE bombs <laughs> everywhere, um, and then the rockets. Uh, it's it's got this massive like rocket dump pattern of like he rockets it's it's a huge number of rockets that they deploy right yeah downsides of it if you play cvs and you've played fdr or you're aware of fdr is the what i would call the refactory period between drops is is really long like you make a drop and then mm. you're back up in your squadron and you're trying to come around for that second drop and it's really long um it's uh you know over 20 seconds uh between drops um and so so you've got this you've got to like and the planes aren't fast so they're really well armored and they're tough but people people think you can just like fly an fdr squadron in loops around like somebody waiting for it to come back and ready to fire again you really can't you're gonna lose planes um yeah for real you can't fly through you you, you can't fly through you can fly through flak with the planes because they're really tough but like you shouldn't um but you've got you've kind of got to make your drop and then you kind of kind of go out and lope around and come back around and wait for the reset because it's a really long cycle before yeah, you can drop sure. again and that's I, part of you know part of the mitigation on it being a just 
putting out too much damage. Which is like, yeah, which is I think is as much as it pains me to say, I think that's a reasonable amount of mitigation. Oh yeah, you I know? think so too. Like, and I, and I this think, ship is you know, powerful, I... but it's not like it was when it first came out, thankfully, because it was, yeah. and part of that is that, that factor where, you know, as coupons have come out, more and more players, more and more waves of players have gotten the ship. Uh, but we, you know, I don't see a lot of Roosevelt's out there anymore. I don't think it's Well, that's what I was just going to pick well. at. Oh, right? go ahead. So, yeah, so yeah. This is another thing like with Shikishima where I talked about Satsuma. I don't know why today, if you wanted oh. to be a, a CV dirt bag and you were an American <laughs> CV dirt bag flavored player, sure. Uh, why you would spend steel on this when you just spend silver and get the dang USA, the tier the 11 United with States. the jets and all of its gimmicks? Because I, th it, again, that 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 ship is so this, the USA is so strong. We we when we face them, um, they're very. Bad. I feel like I feel like that really. I don't I don't feel like there's as big a a, a need for for FDR to exist in that world. I think there's plenty of people who love Midway. Um, I know I like Lexington. <clears throat> I'm not to Midway yet. I'm not worried about not liking Midway. I played Saipan. I'm familiar with the planes. Played Cure Sarge, I'm familiar with the planes. All kinds of stupid places you can play U.S. planes. I'm not to Midway yet, but I know that I'll like Midway when I get there. Um, I like FDR well enough, but I just don't know if you spend steel on it if you're a CV player when you might as well just mm -hmm. get the tier 11 now. Yeah. Uh, Crown Vic in chat says, I like this guy. He's enjoying your take, uh, and that's great, Crown Vic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to disparage CV players because I actually no. don't. I don't have a problem with CV players. If you're a CV main and that's what you enjoy playing, keep playing. Spend money on the game. Keep the servers up so I can play stuff I like at tier 7. Uh, you know, like um, <laughs> yeah, uh, submarine yeah. players I don't want to talk to right now. Uh, not, <laughs> not at the I, moment. I, you know, but, but <laughs> CV players. And I play C, I play CV on and off, and, and I, I, I my, in my, on my stupid lame account my highest win rate is in cv go figure but yeah um, but like also like your your take on you know here we've got the fdr for expensive hard to get steel when yeah. for credits you can go get united states i think that's that's something that players should concern themselves with obviously with the tier 10 we had a comment earlier about satsuma and uh uh and shikishima where nova galaxy said but you can earn credits with with uh shikishima right and so that's something to concern yourself with here i will say yeah. too uh roosevelt is a i mean in i have a love for carriers in real life i don't play a lot of carriers in uh, world of warships but this is a good looking ship it's got a giant effing 42 on it it's got a cool camo this is a cool looking model of an aircraft carrier and i know that's not the reason we buy steel ships but it doesn't hurt to look at this one this is a beautiful yeah. warship midway sure. midway and fdr that midway class right they're both really good looking ships right and those are kind they of they really post -war. are those are you know really it was the it re really was the essex class uh, ships that really carried us through the end of world war ii Lots midway of and essex fdr kind of came too. after and you know midway i don't i think fdr served into the 70s um oh, okay. i think midway might have actually served a little bit longer than fdr just through retrofits i think you know the version of the version of fdr we get in game and the version of midway we get in game i don't think it was too late into the 50s before they went back into the shipyards and had the the angled flight deck mods done for uh you know that we're more used to with nimitz class ships where they you know they have the sideways deck for, launching yeah the kind of comes off the one side yep <clears throat> yeah. yeah but um it's a good looking ship midway's a good looking ship they're they're cool uh and honestly the the crazy planes that it launches are cool to look at these are they're yeah we were zooming are. in on those a second ago they're, they're double cool. double prop pusher puller weird configuration plane that I'll you know reminds me of uh... reminds me of something from like secret weapons of the luftwaffe and and you know it's this weirdly designed like turbo prop that never really was created you, you um, can see I've got them on the screen here. They've got a yeah. propeller in front of another propeller, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. They're, they're neat um, planes. It's fun, you know. If you like, if you like carrier aviation, uh, shout out, shout out to the, to the United States Navy. Right, it's a hundred years of, of carrier aviation uh, since the Langley CV one. Right, this year, um, which is pretty cool. And, which is pretty cool. And so, so anyway, but I, I don't know why I bought FDR though, honestly. Uh, and on it and what does it get used for now i never play it in randoms because i don't i don't belong in tier 10 carriers and randoms yeah, if i had to play a tier 10 carrier ass. and randoms i'd probably play max Immelman. um i use i use fdr uh for when there's like a mission for aircraft carrier torpedo, torpedo damage. landings yeah yep i use it to farm torpedo mm -hmm. damage and co-ops uh or or if there's like some tier 10 game mode um 
Yeah, I used it a lot. Remember when we first got Satsuma and Hanover and it was in that special mode? Oh, yeah. Uh, the super ship I, test mode. Yeah, whatever they, I, that used, game mode I, I took FDR in there a lot because it was fun to drop Hanovers and Satsumas back then. <clears throat> Uh, Downriver, yeah, I remember that. You would go in there with that, and I would take like a torpedo destroyer. You took be, like Paul and a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> we'd be mean to battleship. Yeah, uh, Downriver, Rick said Midway was the last of the class in service. She lasted until after the Persian Gulf War. For people who don't know when that was, that was like 1991 ish. Uh, 91 was when that war took place. Um, Big Data also says, hey, if you played 210 carriers, in response to our comment earlier, um, he said, if you play tier 10 carriers, then you'll still see a lot of FDRs out there. Um, so we were saying you don't see a ton of them out there. Big Data says, I see them because he, uh, Big Data is a CV player, uh, at least erstwhile, if not uh, uh, frequent. Um, so, That's yeah, fair. they're out there, I, I suppose. So Big Data is seeing them in, in battles. So, you know, I think it's out there. Um, but it's not nearly as overwhelming as it was when we first started seeing these ships um, roll out of the old steel mill here. And guys, I think that is our whole discussion on steel ships. Uh, I think we talked about these nine. We talked a little bit earlier on about the steel economy. We talked about summers for a brief while. Um, thanks, guys, for being a part of this. If uh, you're here on Twitch, um, it's about 11.17 p.m. my time. I'm probably going to run one or two more games. I don't know if Scott is going to stay up with me. Um, and then uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for watching on YouTube. I hope this was entertaining for you and, and useful and and you learned something or or you found some value in it. If you did, tell a friend, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, whatever. Uh, and of course, we'd love to have you come hang out with us live on Twitch. We're at twitch.tv slash Clyde Plays Live. This is Clyde Plays on YouTube and that's Clyde Plays Live. I'm confusing everyone who's on Twitch right now. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to have you come hang out with us for the live show. Um, and of course, you can catch me on Twitter as well. You can find all those links in the description below. Um, with that, Scott, any closing words to, to shut up the uh, the old discussion here? Or what do you think? We Tune in next time because we need to talk about research bureau ships. <laughs> That's true. We do. Hojoy was like, I, he's like, a little bit ago, I ignored his comment. Hojoy, and I, not because I didn't want to talk about them. He's like, I need you to understand that it will be like two years before I can get a steel ship. And I'm like, bro, I understand. It took me forever to get my first one. Um, and we are gonna talk about research career ships as well. But anyway, thanks everyone. And, and we will catch you in the next video. Take care of each other and we will see you uh, then. <laughs>